D20s closer than my D12s, because, you know, I use all those. Yeah, you know, you, you never know when you might need D12 to, uh, uh, someone make an m m joke for me, please, I'm tapped out. I'm spaghetti. There you go, uh, thank you, buddy. Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> will the real Jermong please stand up? And anyway, okay, so welcome to Waterdeep Dragon Heist, gentlemen. So I'm glad that you guys told me that you're prepared, because I absolutely am not. Um... I realize how much I am, ba how bad I am at oh running Who, games. Who's, for... who's driving this train? M me, technically, I'm just really bad at uh, running from digital books, so I'm going to need to get a physical one at some point. But th it should be fine. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to establish who we are. Dominance. Uh, Fight him. All right. Establish dominance. I like this. Let's do it. So we're going to establish who is playing who. So um, I would like to start with the, well, on the uh, the image order. So Josh, why don't you tell us about your character? His name is Zalid. He's a plant. I don't change this. Yeah, I was no. about to say, let's, let's get these mic issues out of the way immediately. Now, let's just deal with them. I have the changed to years. push to talk again because apparently that's the only way this works. You, you coming um, in loud and clear. Yeah, loud and good. clear, man. Good. Uh, yeah, my name, my character's name is. Uh, um, <laughs> it starts at Sparse. Geralf, right? That's Ger his name. Geralf. The character sheet right? Geralf with an F. Geralf? That's right, Geralt. That's it. Ger it Geralt? Be Geralt. And he's the, he's the it wizard. couldn't be that because of that game. <laughs> uh, Yet you named him after the fucking dad in Fire Emblem. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> anyway, tell me about Geralt, please. Uh, Geralt is a young and spry uh, human rogue. I thought you said he was like 30 years old. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would consider young. the young and spry asshole. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he still he still gets hung over, but he's still like active. Like, <laughs> all right, he, all right. He, he's got he's got some games. Hurt, <laughs> get up the the real question is: Is he hung? Over? All right, all right, all right, all right. Anyway, I'm sorry. He's young and spry, ro human rogue. Uh, from the city of Scornabel, which. For, for future us listening, hey, remember when we burned that to the ground? Yeah, so that was a thing in his early childhood. Uh, I didn't do that. I tried to fix it. That was I burned it to the ground, though. <laughs> uh, and by me, I mean Lufir. That guy's an asshole. Um, Late epic. I'm just, I'm just glad he's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> he's not dead. Well, who, Lufir? So after that happened, Braid with the dead. Crimson Maw, uh, he... He ended up kind of, you know, caravanning around with the refugees from Scornabel. And now he's looking to make some money to take back to the people so they can rebuild the city. Right on. Um, real quick, while we have a, uh, I believe, a missing Isaac. Um, yeah, because I think uh, Harrison needed something. But anyway, um, no, Mark, just to establish, this is five years after Candlestick. Um mm -hmm. R Lufir's not dead. Lufir's not dead. He died after he completed his, like, no. task. No. A... No. Do you not okay. remember what happened? I don't remember, buddy. Okay. I've yeah. had a hell of a time. It's okay. Jermong ascended um, and restored his life and everything, and so now Lufir, or rather, Sir Reginald, is just fucking around. Oh, yeah, doing I remember whatever, now. Doing whatever the fuck he wants to do. Uh, okay. Rugnar fucked off after he rebuilt the Ducal Palace of Baldur's Gate and went to Sigil and is chilling there. And Jermong's a god. Um, By the way, just forever Bear Man. <clears throat> forever Bear Man. Yeah, I figured. He's probably forever hanging. Bear Man. Yeah, he's probably hanging out, um, doing cool things with. Uh, I don't drinking know. Drinking myself to death. Drinking yourself to death along with your good friend uh, Grognar Fudgepist, the barbarian, the epic level twenty retired barbarian. Who I've decided is like a permanent character in everything I do now. <laughs> he was a good one. Oh, he was so fucking good. Grognard, no take shit from no one. Also, I did find a way to. Um, you remember how I said that there were no plants in Sigil, but then also said that he had a garden. Mm -hmm. It's a zen. Mm -hmm. It's a zen garden. It's all rocks. All rocks. Yes. So yeah. So I. So I did it. 
So, um, yeah, that's Geralt. Uh, Isaac, why don't you tell us about your guy? All right. Um, I will be playing uh, Zin- Sinros uh, Quill Sharpener. <laughs> Shut up. Go on. <laughs> no, I'm going to be playing Rush. He is a water water genasi uh, cleric <clears throat> of the Church of uh, Jermon. Uh he basically, you know, as true as Genasi, like you know, he was born and born and immediately orphaned because you know, like daddy, daddy genie was not really too fond of, of taking care of their kids. He went out to buy a packet of like wa- uh, wet cigarettes and then never came back. Yeah, uh, but uh, so he was orphaned, uh, taken in by. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm making room because I had to move because Harrison was like in the next room and or not respond like yelling for me because he could hear me through the wall. Right, he can play. Uh, we can we can roll in the character real quick. Uh, but no, he was originally taken in. Uh, to, to, he was originally taken in by the Church of Timora. Uh, the you know god of you know mischief, trick, or you know just all you know like. Similar concept, because I, I, he will be, uh, you know, yeah, so, mm. uh, but uh, basically he was orphaned, and he was uh, born right around the time of the rise of uh, of our previous party, and Jeremiah, and all that, and <clears throat> so he grew up, he grew up when um, Jeremiah came into power, and he revered him as a hero, basically, and uh, so he was very much in Baldur's Gate, kind of like you know, as an orphan, like that young. He's probably about eight, nine, ten or so when the uh, the final Inquisition took place. So it was straight up like this, you know, larger than life, like borderline superhero status for them when they you know ended the war. Right. Uh, and so he, you know, continued on after that. He uh, continued on in the Church of Timora with his training. Uh, you know, still kind of, uh, you know, viewed them as the heroes, but didn't know any different. Didn't really know about Jermong's ascension until Jermong basically had a divine intervention and. Uh, you know, came and basically set, you know, like being, you know, kind of the uh, the great upstanding citizen Jermong is, he just led led Rush to believe whatever he would, basically painting the picture of him being, you know, the good guy and leaving out all the murdery stuff. I believe the word you're looking for is asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So leaving out all the murdery stuff and kind of just, you know, running with it. Like, Jermong kind of enjoyed, like, you know, the popularity and it didn't really matter to him how he got it so he's just like no it's cool if he wants to be you know like a good guy that still worships me like so be it uh so um yeah that's kind of how i'm viewing jermong is he tends to align himself more on the darker side of things but his followers can fall on pretty much any spectrum because the only thing that matters to him is his own his own renown Hey, fair enough. Fall on the more like dark side of things, mm-hmm. but he's not gonna say like to to worship me. Mm. But that doesn't mean that the uh, the opinion of the church isn't that they're not good people. But he'll take any place. Right. Um. But so he, you know, Rush being very naive because he's uh, at the time of. What we're starting this, he's probably only like 17, 18, 19. Like, he's right coming a bit. Um, but, uh, so Jermong intervened, realizing that his childhood hero had become a god. Like, he immediately started, like, you know, he was all about that, uh, ultimately leading to his banishment to the Church of Timora because, I mean, they know that Jermong's not necessarily a good dude. Mm-hmm. Um, Rush, still not willing to believe that, instantly picked up arms and followed Jermon and uh, has become a refugee because he was banished out of the church after after all this. 
Right on. And you're so you're playing a uh, trickster cleric, right? Correct. Excellent. Um, okay. And last on the list, we have Mark. Why don't you tell us about your boy? Marky Poo, where are you? Hey. Want to know. <laughs> if you're talking, we cannot hear you. I see a green circle around you. Hold on, I'm calling Baby he, Goodnight. He, oh, he's good night, playing, Baby. He's playing Rare Gun. Um, <coughs> it is. Rare Gun is a uh, druid <laughs> that uh, likes. I mean, he has an affinity for bears, I would say. But... He drinks lots of tea. I can't remember Garen's last name, so I can't do like a... A uh, twig beard. Oh, uh, I thought it was his... bullshit. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Rugnar. Oh, Rugnar, oh, Rugnar, e Rugnar S. Bullshit. <laughs> Esquire. The Fifth. God. Uh, uh, so, so fondly looking back upon that shit. But this is going to be neat. And I think... I. I don't know. I can't say for certain, but I think you guys will like this a little bit better, just because a lot of my shortcomings can be solved with the use of a pre-written uh, adventure, as it were. Australian Dungeon Masters be like adventure. Well, that baby certainly takes a long ass time to get told good night now, doesn't it? <laughs> So how's everyone doing? Dude, I'm fucking tired. <laughs> I want to take that and make it a ringtone. Um, say, fucking okay. hello. I was I was struggling for shit to talk about, but that is good. Hello, welcome back. That's all right. Tell me about. Yeah, I mean, did Josh not do a cough? Fuck, he's right. Cough. All right, cool. We can start. Go ahead with uh, your character. Uh, my character's name is Book. Okay. And what kind of character is he? Uh, he's a Tabaxi. 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 Uh -huh. Tabaxi. And what class uh, is he? He's a bard. Okay. And is there anything you Tabaxi want to tell? Bard. You want us? You want to tell us about him? Uh, Book has wares. Book has wares. If you. Book has wares and services. As long as you. As long as you have money. Good, excellent, wonderful. Okay, so we talked about this uh, like over Discord the other day. Um, the three of you guys. Uh, the way I was gonna do this is we had to find a way to get you guys into Waterdeep so that Waterdeep Dragon Heist could happen because it has to happen in Waterdeep. Um, and so the thing we went with was that um, it is springtime, and <coughs> no. Um, because it is springtime and a uh, Founders Day festival happens in summer in Waterdeep. And Waterdeep being pretty much the biggest dang old city in on the Sword Coast, the biggest metropolitan area, um, Founders Day is a really big deal for merchants where they can come and sell all kinds of shit and make all kinds of money. And <clears throat> and so Book uh, wanted to get in on that. And so you guys had basically shacked up in uh, Baldur's Gate. Book was looking for people to ha come along with him. Just like two bodies to go with his caravan and guard it from, you know, prying eyes and everything. The Sword Coast is a little bandit overrun. So <clears throat> some extra hands to basically project toughness is always nice. So that's how we had Rush and Geralt join the caravan. Um... So, <clears throat> excuse me, Book, what the other two do not realize is that not only are you bringing goods with which to sell yourself, you are also um, <clears throat> making a delivery of sorts to a nice. disclosed location, <clears throat> and you were basically told to make it to, make it to Waterdeep and await instructions at the gate. <clears throat> so you guys are going along you've got this caravan full of well all kinds of shit really there's like weapon shipments which is not terribly uncommon especially in a city with such a large guard population as Waterdeep um, you've got stuff like uh, let me let me look at that again 
You've got stuff like letters and seals of approval and uh, alchemical components and, weirdly enough, some playing cards and some carnival setups. And when I say carnival setups, I mean, like, um, I mean, Tilt-a-whirl. like, oh, Tilt-A-Whirls, I'm talking, like, uh, roulette wheels and all kinds of stuff. You guys look like you're set up for a huge party, um, bu- except for, and Book told you about this, there's this one package sealed in a small trunk about a foot or two, about like a foot and a half in length. And it has been told all of you guys to not open it and to not touch it under any circumstances. So whenever you guys make it to the gates of Waterdeep, and you know you're in Waterdeep area like before you even hit the gates, because Waterdeep is a civilized country, uh, city-state as it were. The lands around it are well patrolled by the Griffin Patrol. Um, sorry, whatever the hell they're called, the Griffin Guard. Uh, Gryffindor. <clears throat> yes, the Gryffindor. Um, it's well patrolled in the skies and on the and on the uh, the grass and just in the water. Everything is well patrolled and well maintained. There's still room for crime and everything, but outwardly they don't like to give that impression. So, you guys go up to the first gate, the eastern gate of Waterdeep coming from the south and then taking a turn to the west so you guys are like coming like you know do a little cool little hook maneuver kind of like you know you're playing New Vegas but um and you guys arrive at the um you guys arrive at the big gate and you can see there's like a it's like sort of like a toll gate except Waterdeep doesn't charge any tolls in fact what is happening is that um all caravans have to pass through registration um, and they need to have their goods inspected, and they need to generally just be waved through before they can enter the city. Book, what is your play? So they're gonna they're gonna dig through my stuff. They do it with everybody. They just give it a good pat down. How many are there? Um, like the guards. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you see, um, the gate is manned by uh, the people doing the inspecting. Is like just two of them. Um, but it's water deep, and you're familiar with the place. There, they could have guards swooping in from the sky on griffins. Uh, but I mean, do these guys? Uh, let's do an insight check on these guys and, and see what their morals are. All right, I'll, guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you. Go ahead. You guys are waiting in queue while you do this. <clears throat> you have to attend into the queue. Rush has got his uh, switch out, and he's playing some fire emblem. Hell yeah. Alrighty. That's a twenty-one. Okay, excellent. So, you see that they're pretty, uh, they're pretty up about up on the up and up about their job, but um, <clears throat> whenever you got your uh, thing, you're remembering now that some palms have been greased, and you're hoping that that promise rings true. Gotcha. So you want to go ahead and continue in the queue, or you want to do something different? We will continue. Okay. So whenever you guys finally come up to your turn in the queue, um, and it's starting to get kind of dark out. I'm talking like it's 7.30, maybe the sun's setting and everything, so dusk is hitting. These guys um, <clears throat> these guys go and start like poking around, like asking for your papers and everything, but... Whenever they take your papers, they stop, and they kind of stop short of checking what you've got, and they wave you on through, through the gates. So, you are now in, let me look at my map of Waterdeep. Fun fact, the physical book of Waterdeep Dragon Heist comes with a map of Waterdeep that is like six feet long. Because yeah. Water, yeah, because Waterdeep is fucking huge. Um... Let's see. You go in through the trade ward, the trade ward's gate. And you've been instructed to head to a warehouse in the dock ward. All right. Okay. So you're going through, and again, Waterdeep is huge. So as you get through the trade ward and... 
you start passing uh, all of the the people coming in and out of the local taverns, particularly the Yawning Portal, which may or may not be the most famous tavern in all of the realms. Um, you start passing past all those clientele and taking some of the uh, some of the back alleys, and around nightfall, you're getting close to the edge of the dock ward. When uh, what are you guys' passive perceptions at? Not incredible. Um, let me pull it up. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um, passive. Sixteen. Mine's not terrible. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm a I Nazi forgot. I, I took system. perception. Yeah. All right. What's so, your? Yeah, so mine is mine's mine's not great, but mine's a fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. So, rush nice. and rush and book. Gerald, you. I don't know what you're doing, but like you're kind of like snoozing off. You know, kind of like chilling with the goods. But Rush and um, and, it's, and Book, Book, you're like your ears twitch, and Rush, something just feels like off about your moistness or something. I don't know. Um, you you feel like a particular dry patch, and guys, all, I'm less moist. <laughs> something's up. So then, all of a sudden, a hatchet comes flying out of a window and embeds itself in the uh, the side of your caravan. Just missing rush as it uh, goes through. I need everyone to roll initiative. Well, that's just not nice. Oh man, this is gonna be weird that I don't get like yeah, all my like bonuses to plus initiative. nineteen to initiative. Or whatever um, the fuck. So that's that's a thirty-two. Wait. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. I got a nineteen. It's, it's, it's a five. I got a ten. A five. I'm not even ten. playing like a dex class, so like initiative for me is gonna be weird. Five and a ten. I'm, I'm almost all mental. Yeah. All right, Gerald. What is your niche? Nineteen. All right. So Gerald, then Rush, Rook. then Book. Rogue does rogue things. You right? Wait, Book. Gerald is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, board. sorry. Book then Rush. Excuse me. Okay. So, let's see. Gerald. Uh, the sound of a hatchet embedding itself into the side of the caravan uh, is enough to wake you up from whatever the hell you're like chilling out about. You drop your switch and make sure that you put it in battery saving mode so you can play more Fire Emblem later. Um, and from within the uh, the window from where that hatchet came, uh, you see man who's probably standing on a crate uh, with another hatchet ready in his hands. What do you do? Uh, I'd like to draw my short bow and take a shot at him. Okay, roll me an attack. It's so fun to be level one again. Yeah, remember that time, like, Sinros was one shot That's at level 11? one? And eleven actually does it, um, because these guys are fucking wimps. Um, roll for damage for me. And yes, I do. A thirteen? Wow, really? For da how? Did wow, awesome. Um, so let me roll up something real quick, just for my own sanity. Oh wow, the fucking remaster sounds so bad, but whatever. Um, so yeah, you loose an arrow from your short bow, and it goes through and gets this halfling straight in the jugular. Um, and he falls and thuds on the ground uh, loud enough to clue you in that he was definitely standing on a box. And so. Uh, before we get to Book's turn, um, you guys see another couple figures starting to swarm the uh, alley that you guys are in. Some guys step off of the roof, and then you see one guy on each end of the alley blocking you guys in. And before you know it, you have four thugs that are uh, wielding axes and knives and approaching you menacingly. And one of them that's on the roof, uh, the one that's on the roof, uh, hefts an axe and smiles and says, The Xanathar sends its regards. And he chucks a hatchet. Book, what is your AC? Uh, AC. <laughs> That's a good question. I have leather armor. What's uh, your class again? He's a bard. Oh, okay. Let's see. Your armor class is 13, uh, so 13, this yep. does hit. It hits you for four slashing damage as a hatchet yes. rockets past you and catches you on the arm pretty dang good. <clears throat> That's half health, boys. Welcome to level one. Alright. 
Rush. One of the bandits. Wait, book, book didn't... Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is... this gotcha. is, I rolled them in pairs of Band two. Turns. Yes. Gotcha. Gotcha. I rolled them in pairs of two. So, Rush, one of the bandits comes at you with a knife. And this guy is like a muscly half-orc, so it's kind of funny that he's wielding a knife now that I said it out loud. But he comes and slashes at you, but just misses shy of your chest area. Book, it is now your turn. You've got one bandit on the uh, the roof. You've got one on each end of this alleyway and one that's currently up in Russia's deal. Are they all within 90 feet of me? Um, yes. Yeah, they're all relatively close. Sleep. Okay, so you're going to cast sleep on the general area. You will catch Rush and yourself and Gerolf in that. That's fine. I'd rather, I'd rather those two be knocked out or not present whenever I deliver my package. Are, are you... Does sleep, does, sleep affect, does sleep affect yourself? No. Well, well but it, it, cycles, <laughs> it, it cycles through, though. Like, you pick a target, and then it Yeah, you start off. one target, and then you go from there. So it's based on their HP. You were, you were, yeah, you were absolutely correct. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, because it only affects how many people based on HP pool. Mm-hmm. Because Sinros was looking at doing that a whole bunch, but then when I saw how difficult it actually was, it only happened like. Yeah, it was a lot easier in like 3.5. Yeah, well. But it's fine, because it's still good. Can you guys hear Emily playing um, Fire Emblem, by the way? I don't think you can. A little, a little bit, but it's not distracting. Okay, cool. Like, I can hear the clink, clink, but it's not bad. All right. So I'm not kicking her out of the room. She's having fun. Dude, I wish I could hear it more. I love that game. <laughs> so fucking good, right? Golden Deer for fucking life. 24. 24? Okay. I um, want Dorothy to step on me. Yeah, don't we all, buddy? <laughs> um, okay. 24, you said. So it uh, says creatures are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. I'll tell you this. Um, Starting with a creature that has the lowest current hit points. So the... Two thugs on each end of the alleyway, and the one that's currently on Rush, um, fall dead asleep, leaving just the one on the roof. Uh, Rush, your turn. Okay, it's just the one on the roof? Just the one on the roof that's still conscious. Alright, give me that wisdom saving throw for command. Um, 18. Oh, it saves. I'm sorry. So. <laughs> As a, like, uh, how, how would you say, like, um, I, I'm also going to, like, ask you guys about spell flavor because I am uh, a oh sucker yeah. for that oh shit. Oh, yeah, no, when I'm saying command, I was say I was telling him to halt. So they're just going to look at me like, the fuck you say? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you yelling at him. I love it. Okay, top of the turn order, just, and... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just picturing this. He, he, he yells very, very uh, sternly, halt. And then the guy just like, uh, what? <laughs> and then so, throws something at him, and then the next round yeah. he's just like hiding behind something. Please call. Yup. So, um, with sleep, let's see. They fall until the spell ends. The sleep until they until some. Oh yeah, wow, yeah. That sleep is so fucking good. Anyway, so That's let's see here. At the top of the turn order, you see more bodies start to enter the darkness. Uh, all three. No, no. Do, do Ganassi have dark vision? I think they no. do. No, they really. Do not, not water. Yeah, earth and fire do, but air and water do not. So, Book, you see, because um, in the darkness it's kind of hard to make out the exact details of these guys. I'm um, a skulker. Yeah, because these guys are not, you're kind of away from the lamplight. But, um, Book, you are able to recognize that uh, another group of four people start uh, coming into the scene However, these guys are dressed a little differently. The first four thugs that you guys uh, encountered had, like, piecemeal leather armor of, like, no visual um, similarity. But uh, these guys show up, and they are dressed in all-black uniform leather armor. Um, you've got two halflings that sh uh, spring in, and then you got an elf and a human. And they don't actually start attacking you guys. Well, maybe not immediately, because one of them, two of them throw throwing daggers at the guy on the roof and they both miss horribly all right Gerald, you are 
faced with a awake thug on the roof, and then you've got four thugs that just came through one of the ends of the alley wearing black armor that you can't really see, so I don't know why I said that. Uh, I'll just aim my bow at the guy on the roof. All right. Roll me an attack. Uh, does a 26 hit? Um, fuck it's your... actually a crit. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah, yeah, roll the damage, dude. Do I get sneak attacks on crit? Um... If, if they're, if they're disposed. Like, if there's somebody within five feet of them, or you have advantage. And so you, not on this guy. Yeah, you, you don't get it on this guy, but yes, in the case of other things. But it's still got to... You don't get sneak attack damage at all on this guy, do you? Uh, no. What? No. No, But exactly. it's still 15 not damage. damage. Not okay. unless you find a way to impose advantage on yourself or disadvantage on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's still 15 damage, so... 15 damage. All right, yeah. Um, your arrow uh, just catches him in the chest, and he screams... He does the Wilhelm scream as he falls off of the roof into, like, a bale of hay. Um, so let's see. And then, and this is why this is so fucking fun to me, from the other end of the... <laughs> from the other end of the alley, you see yet another group of people show up. Except, um, these guys are all elves, it appears. Book, you recognize them as dark elves, which is very weird. Like, really weird. You, it's weird to see drow out and about on the surface. So let's see here. And they are going to shoot their crossbows at the guys across the alley. If that hits and that hits. Let's see. I'm going to try and kill the NPC on NPC combat as quickly as possible. All right. For 10 damage total, to, uh, one of the thugs on the, uh, made it with black armor drops. Bringing our turn order to book. You seem to be caught in between a battle between... Uh, four Dark Elf thugs, and now three thugs in black armor. I mean, all the other, like, guys that were attacking us are dead, right? Or, well, they're asleep. Yeah, they're either asleep or they're dead. Now, and we're... Were we on our caravan right now? Uh, you guys, like, had a, like, a wagon, you know? It wasn't, like, a covered wagon. This is a standard, like, you know, travel wagon. You guys are, like, with it, but you're in an alleyway, and the only exits from therein are the exits that these guys are standing in. It's either that or abandon it and go through the windows in the nearby buildings that you're stuck between. I guess I'm going to hide under the wagon. Okay, you're going to, um, roll me a stealth check. That he is. It's a 14. It's a 14. Alright, so whenever you uh, crawl under, you come face to face with a gnome underneath the wagon that appears to have been hiding. And he um, has. You're, you're breaking up on me. Oh, am I? I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me now? Hello? Hi? Hello? Yes. Yep, yeah, good cool i don't know what just happened there all right so anyway um whenever you duck underneath the wagon to do your hiding um <clears throat> you actually come face to face with a small gnome with frizzy brown hair and it looks like he's clutching a oval shaped uh like package uh wrapped with um not only rope but also chains and he begins to scurry away um roll me a dexterity save we're gonna well yeah, it's a dexterity contest, but let's just roll it off a deck save. Try that again, because that bounced all off of everything. Oh, I was about to say, you don't you don't have lucky this the, time. A, across the room. <laughs> okay, so. so I, while I was scout, trying to grab it, I exited out of everything on my phone. <laughs> okay, what was it? Dex? Yeah, just a dex contest. Okay. Uh, just dex, not save? Um, let's do save, because I rolled him as a save. Okay, 17. Okay, he rolled a 19. So, whatever it is this dude is uh, carrying, you try to make a swipe for him, and you fall just short as he scuttles away towards the guys in the 
black armor. And let's see. They all make swipes. Do I know if it's my package? You don't know what was inside the um, the trunk that you were told not to open or touch, but gotcha. you do um, you can get out from underneath the caravan and check if you would like to. But that would be like next turn. Gotcha. Okay. Rush. Okay, so no, both. I'm gonna stop that gnome. It's hopefully a free action. <laughs> you could definitely say that. Okay, that worked. Um, so you're dealing with seven conscious thugs, four on one side, three on the other. No, you're dealing with one gnome. <laughs> I mean, technically, he's a, like you know, he, I'm employed by there. So the boss said, I mean, let's do it. I'm gonna cast sacred plane at the gnome. Okay. Yeah, you can definitely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And to clarify, since I'm a water Ganassi, my flame is more on the radiant side, but it's like a blue radiance, kind of like the water. So, yeah, I can buy that. I like that. Uh, is that a attack roll? Uh, sacred flame is a deck save. Okay, he's got really good decks. Um, yeah, he rolled a fifteen. Mm, Fourteen's a save. So sorry. Um, Way harder. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like it's, you, it's you all, launch. And it's all or none. Yeah, it's a it's yeah. A trip that's all or none. Yeah, you launch a pillar of blue fire that he does like this cool dodge roll away from, and then he leaps into a window of uh, nearby from the opposite side that the halfling sh fired a shot at you guys from, and disappears into the building. Okay. <clears throat> well, you guys are fired. <laughs> so let's see here. This is gonna happen. So the drow oh, are going to no. take attacks at those. I, Rush is fired. Mm -hmm. The other guy's fine. Yeah, that's that's fair. Me. I've just I've just yelled at people, and they're like, fuck you say, and then I just, like, threw it with poof, fire, and, you know, like, it's all <laughs> good. So, let's see. So the guys in black armor fire back at the dark elves, and you guys are basically just caught in between, like, was essentially a street gunfight. And you see one of the dark elves go down, um... And the other ones start, like, to dodge around on nimbly and elf-like. Gerald. Yes? And I'm well, assuming you you also heard me say, get that gnome. Yeah, you saw, uh, a, yeah. You saw a gnome leap into um, one of the nearby windows carrying a s ovular package. Do I still have clear on the side of the gnome? He leapt through the window, and you lost him after that. All right. Uh, and you said everybody else is just fighting? Yeah, you guys are like, you're essentially caught in a gunfight, except that instead of guns, it's like crossbows and shit. All right. Uh, Geralt's going to take this moment uh, to look at the, his friends and be like, Hey, uh, I think we should go. I think we should not. I think, I think you, you, should go. Go. you should follow cool. the gnome, and we'll catch up. Cool. Peace out. And he's going to leave. And he'll go after the gnome. He's, you're going to go after the gnome? Yeah. All we'll right. just like... Do a cool barrel roll through the window or something. Yeah, and you can definitely do that. It's a pretty large window. Th throws a barrel through the window. All right, so you um you roll into this building, and the smell of rotting meat immediately catches you. Um, it appears you have uh, dove into an abandoned butcher's shop. Um, and so you're seeing, like, hunks of meat and a few of them jiggling still because they've recently been jostled by a running gnome. But you do not see the gnome himself. Uh, heck, one second. Josh is going to be pissed whenever he finds out what music I'm playing. Can I do, like, if I wanted to track him, what can I check what I have to do? Um, that's a good question. Um, I ca you can give me a perception roll, or 
Investigation is supposed to be like committed, long term searching, like thirty minutes. But is it is it committed long term? This is probably much faster than like. G- give me give me investigation, investigation. or perception. It, it, I'll take it. Investigation I'll or perception. Do, I'll do perception. How about that one? All time. right, that's fine. It's an eleven. Okay. Um, let me see here. I'm gonna roll against his stealth, which is awful. Okay, he did really bad. Yeah. Um. So the way that the um that the meat hanging from the ceiling in the butcher shop uh, is like moving, like you know, some of them are idly swaying in the air. Um, it tells you that he seems to have gone straight from where the window is and then took a sharp right because of just like the way. And like, there's also, excuse me splatters of blood on the floor from these old carcasses so you posit that he took a right okay um i'm gonna go at an angle like to the direction he ran and just kind of follow alongside him to see where he's going okay we will catch up with that in a bit rush Oh, wait, wait, sorry, 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 fuck. I, like, I was reading a book, and for some reason I was like, that's Josh, obviously. Um, okay, so let's see. The black armored guy, uh, the drow, excuse me, goodness. The drows are gonna fire against the guys in black armor. And they're gonna hit with one of them. Another guy with black armor drops, bringing the drow count to three and the black armor thugs to two. Book, you are currently hidden underneath the caravan. I mean, just immediately, like, looking up at my car- my caravan. Is there a hole? Um, the ca- well, there's, like... like this guy, did this guy pull some, some nifty corkscrew thing? So, the hatchet, um... Yeah, you know, actually, yeah, you look up at the uh, bottom floor of the caravan, and yes, there's a nice, evenly sawed circle... And I'm assuming it goes straight into my chest. Oh, yeah. You look up, and you can see a tilted-over, foot-and-a-half-long wooden chest that has been opened and is currently sitting empty. All right. Cool. Yeah. Through the window we go. All right. Yeah, and you, uh, just as you enter the room, you see Jerolf booking it down the right. All right. We shall book it. <laughs> I imagine that's not going to be the last time we hear that. All right, um, <laughs> Rush. I mean, when all else fails, uh, just follow them, and I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to catch up to, to Gerald, and then cast guidance on him. Uh, by the way, I just want to throw in, uh, Gerald definitely ninja runs. <laughs> so he's faster and can't get hit with bullets. Oh, that's so good. Oh god, I hate it, but I love it. All right. Um. Yeah. So, is guidance a touch? Yeah. Yeah, it's a touch. Can, am I able to catch up to him? Yeah. Yeah, you're able to. No, you okay. can't. I'm ninja running. <laughs> oh man. Oh wait. I put, Damn my, it. Behind, I put my arms he's... behind my back and kind of run awkwardly towards Gerald. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can definitely... Uh, book, book runs am, exactly am, the way that book... I am that you think book would run. Well, now you see you've given me complete creative control over how book runs, and I choose to believe that he runs on all fours. That he runs what? On all fours. I mean, that's fine. I was just saying, based on his picture, how he's all <laughs> proper. But yeah, so guidance yeah. on, you, on Gerald. So uh, within, within the next minute... You can add a D4 to an ability check of your choice. Alright. So you guys all bust through um, the... uh, You're leaving the gang fight behind as you bust through this old, abandoned butchery. And you see uh, this little gnome um, scooting away as quickly as he possibly can. Um, And let's see. Let's... Someone give me high or low. 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 
All right, we are voting low. All right. And you guys pursue him past a uh, corner. And you come into the a dimly lit street that is essentially a dead end. You feel you must have him. But at the very end of this corner that you've taken, the very end of this uh, thing, actually, as soon as you turn the corner, you're faced with a creature that is six feet in tall, roughly. Definitely not the size of the gnome that grabbed it. Um, it seems to be purple skinned with a large pop collar and several tentacles sprouting from its face. That's awesome. And it points at you and snaps and it casts Aww. sleep on you. So let's see. Anybody in elf? Nope. Nope. <laughs> it, so it crit fails, actually. So, yeah. we'll like. We got 18 so far. It really sucks because I was going to cast sleep as well. 27. What's your what's our current HP, you guys? 31. Four. Four. What do you got, Josh? 11. 31. Pretty sure so, you, you, you surpassed it. I have yeah, yeah. 11. So if you have 20, 25, we're down. 36. Yep. And so, yeah, um... You see this, you see the, um, anyone can make me a quick arcana check if you want to while you're passing out. Is that something I'm good at? Yeah, I'm okay at that. I got it. We're just getting over the fact that I tried it all. Like, that's, this is that's a, about it. uh, non-nat 20. All right. Forward. Yeah, the last thing you see is something you definitely recognize as a mind flayer as you pass out. Um... And God damn it, not again. <laughs> <laughs> just as I, as I pass out, I just say, well, that's not good for business. <laughs> so, you come to a short amount of time later, and, um, let me see, let me, let me just roll a quick d4. So, Rush, um, you awaken to the feeling of someone shaking you. And you open your eyes, and you see a slightly overweight um, man with a full beard and um, with a full beard, a very uh, haughty mustache, and a floopy hat. I'm gonna link you guys a picture of him now. Um, a floopy hat. Yeah, like a floopy hat. It's kind of like it's kind of like droopy. It's kind of it, it's it's airy. It's got a lot of space in it. With a uh, really fluffled collar. Is this the dude on the on the cover? On the no, it is not. Okay. Um, and he looks like you say, "Well, Can that was." You ever say fluffled to me ever again? <laughs> looks like you say fluffled as much as you want to me. Yeah, that's a that's a right sight. A lot of you. Are you okay? And he starts like shaking the other two guys as uh, he's hmm. greeting you. Where? Where are we? Well, you're in you're in water deep. Where? Actually, it looks like we're on Cedar Way, Cedar Street. You're not too terribly far from the Yawning Portal, kid. Where were, where did you did you find us or? Oh yes, I was about on the way to the to the portal myself, and I came across just a group of lads laying about. You weren't uh, involved with that little kerfluffle down the down the way, were you? In a, no, in, we a, in an al in an alley though. Like we, didn't, like, we were just laying out in the street. Well, you guys were, like, at the entrance to the dead-end alley, so it's not unreasonable that okay. anyone passing by could basically, have found you guys. Yeah, basically, we, we were just trying to make sure we weren't, like, moved to another site. No, 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 you guys are in the exact same place you passed out at. Okay. We had nothing to do with the kerfuffle. Well, well, that's good. No one needs to be caught up in that Xanathar and Zintarim business. My name's Volo. Volothamp Gadarm. Celebrity. Person, uh, <laughs> fame personality. Uh, you, you must join me for a drink at the, uh, at the, at the portal. I'd be more than happy to buy it for you. Is there a, uh, is there a legal, legal drinking age at the portal? Oh, no. Um, you're in a medieval setting. Um, drinking age is birth. Okay, just making sure. Um, anyone who wants to do a history, if you're proficient in history for, uh, with, uh, yeah, if you're proficient in history, you can roll it for me if you would like. I am too. 
I can do smart things. But I'm... not that. It's 11. <laughs> you know, it's funny because 11 is actually enough. It's a DC 10. Um, hey. Volotham Gadarm is a name that you know very well. Um, word on the street is he's kind of a braggart, but he's also one of the most prolific book writers like in the Forgotten Realms, period. Um, and he lifts you up and he shakes your hands. Volotham Gadarm, chronicler, wizard, and celebrity at your service. I'm sorry you got caught up in the vi- or presumably got caught up in the violence in our fair city these past ten days. Well, I haven't seen so much blood since my last visit to Baldur's Gate. But now I fear I have... Well, not, not to worry about all that sour business. Come, come. Drinks on me. Alright. I like the sound of that. All you guys go with him? Yeah. Book? Yeah. All right. So, Volo takes you guys through the streets and brings you guys into the Yawning Portal. And <clears throat> you notice the sign on the outside um, immediately, which is a very famous sign. It is just like, you know, it's a it's an old sign that says the Yawning Portal on it, but there's just something about it that is just real iconic. Um, whenever you walk in, even though it's, like, close to midnight, um, it is bustling in there uh there's people every single table is packed um you see a large uh half orc woman arm wrestling this impossibly huge barbarian looking dude um and it seems like they're evenly matched um you see uh la, 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 let's see there's a nice blonde barmaid that's running stuff uh you see a halfling bard sitting by the um the fireplace and it appears that he's playing a lute that only has three strings and is not doing it very well. Um, and let me see. And and as we're walking in, uh, Rush is gonna like subtly cast his blessing on the trickster on Gerald. <laughs> All right, cool. So you have advantage on deck stealth checks for the next hour. Um, let's see. By the bad bard at the hearth, you see a, uh, you see two, uh, human adventure looking types, um, just sitting and, like, chatting each other idly. Um, you see a dark-skinned woman with priestly regalia sitting and drinking with a couple guys who look to be, appear to be bodyguards. And then you see a, uh, you see, like, a dour-looking middle-aged, but ripped, um, bartender cleaning a glass very idly but the biggest thing that catches your attention when you enter the yawning portal is its namesake um the yawning portal is named therefore because it has this massive well in the very middle of it just a massive stone well that goes down as like far as the eye can see and then some even if you have like dark vision you cannot see the bottom of this well uh its circumference or whatever the fuck is like it's large enough to where you can't jump from one side of it to the other. It is a massive, massive well. Almost like the base of a tower in, like, size. And people are just kind of gathered. Um, they, some people use it as an impromptu table. And it does have a bucket mechanism. A bucket to match the size of the huge well that is attached to a mechanism. So, um, Volo takes you guys and he says, uh, got a table over there but uh you want to go get a drink or meander or whatever you wish to do well i'll be waiting for you all right so um i need to get a message out to a guy i know so you want to find someone to do a message for you well i, I need to get it to my my informant Okay, um, let's see. So your informant would be like the guy who gave the job to, aligned with the guy who no, gave no, the job my, to you? No, no, like my criminal future. Oh, I see. Um, so like, what what is my, what is your? I know someone who can connect me with other criminals. Got you. Like he has he has information. So, you are uh, you're you're affiliated with, um, you're you're, you're familiar with Waterdeep. And, uh, you know what? Let me see. Um, I'm trying to think. Alright. 
let me uh, let me take because this is a good in this is a good time to introduce a person. So you just yeah, just um, it's not someone who is affiliated with the job you're doing. Just like a general, uh, this isn't someone who's like affiliated with your. Um, how do you say? The job you're currently taking is just a general criminal with no, connections. A general, general criminal that has information. Okay, so it's funny that you recognize her actually out here, but um, you do see um, someone who you were uh, vaguely familiar with um, during your time doing business in other cities. Um, you recognize Istrid Horn, who is a dwarven moneylender, um, who's a uh, you know, lends money to you, not exactly the up and up. Uh, the less, a, a less kind word for her would be loan shark, um, who has gotcha. people beat the shit out of a, uh, out of a, uh, you know, people who don't pay up on their loans. But yeah, you see her. She's uh, sitting at a table by herself, um, despite there being like three open seats, and she looks to be whittling at a little wooden carving, um, with a knife. Is is she my guy? Yeah, you do remember her. Okay. I'll go. You've worked with her before. Chat like, with her. You don't really know who she works for, but you know she works for somebody. So you sit as down... As, she know, as long as she knows things of use. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, um, yeah, you go and take a seat with uh, Istrid, Istrid Horn. Um, we're going to get to that in just a bit. Um, let me see here. Uh, let's go with initiative order still. Geralf, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I think Jarl probably just goes to the bar and grabs a drink. Okay. Yeah, you um you waltz up to the bar and Dernan, the bartender, uh, looks up at you and he looks you up and down and he's like, Get a drink for you. Yes, sir, and you may put it on my good man's tab over there and he's gonna point the bolo. <laughs> and d you can hear uh you can hear Dernan making a laughing noise. But his thick mustache, uh, like, he's got, like, handlebar mustache going. You can't even tell that he's smiling, but he nods. It's a tab about as long as code legal it is. All right. Shadow Dusk for you. And he gives you a glass of this black, sweet-smelling ale. All right. Rush, what are you up to? Uh, this, uh... No. Okay. Uh, Rush is gonna look around, and he's gonna look for being his first real time out of uh, Baldur's Gate, sort of like just traveling as a refugee, like first time really back in civilization, and out of the church. He's mm -hmm. gonna look to cut loose a little bit, so he's gonna look for like a fun bunch of people and just kind of make it, make himself known and introduce himself to people that look like they're they're having a good time. Okay. So. The most, uh, the most fun you look, uh, that you're able to pick out is the super muscly half-orc woman, um, arm-wrestling a dude on the edge of the portal. Um, a, yeah, it's, it's a large half-orc woman and a large barbarian looking, like, shirtless, uh, just human man. And they're, they're both, like, incredibly ripped and about the same, uh, the same size. Alright. Uh, he's gonna go... I mean, is it, like... And you, there, there are, like, other people that are gathered around them, you know, it's kind of like a crowd forming where, like, you know, yeah, 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 you know, they're kind of, like, chanting right. as yeah, the thing's no, going he's, on. He's gonna go over and kind of, like, awkwardly, like, push him his way in to kind of see what's, what's going on and kind of, like, yeah, go, do the thing. Like, right. He wants to be a part, but he's, he's still <laughs> weird about it. Yeah, yeah, right. Um... So yeah, you push through, and uh, let me see, where is... There she is. Um, and so, yeah, you see... Um, you see a blonde uh, elf that is... Um, that is in this, uh, this group of people. And he looks to the right as you push in, and he's like, You care to make a bet on the big one? And he laughs at his own joke. Um... I, I I don't really have much much to wager with, but um, like bragging right. 
Yeah, that's a good one. Yes, good. Uh, so, the one on the left there, and he points to the uh, half-orc woman. That's Yagra. She's a good friend of mine. Good good for the house. Uh, she's got to totally wipe the floor with this uh, that, uh, that guy over there. I think he calls himself Grognar. And he points at the giant barbarian dude. But Grognar, he looks... He looks. I like Grognar. He looks like he, he could hold his own. Yeah, but I've been knowing Yagra for a long time. Uh, she can beat skulls and tear men apart with her bare hands. I've seen it happen myself. You seem a, you seem a little out of element, kid. My name's Davil. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my name is uh, Rush, and uh, to be honest, this is uh, short of my traveling traveling with the refugees this is my first time out of out of the, the temple so uh this is uh it's all new to me yeah well stick with me kid and we'll take it uh, we'll go far trust me and he puts an arm around you and like just shuffles you a little bit that it's like you know in camaraderie um book you take a seat mm -hmm. with istrid horn who is at her um she's at her table and she's kind of looking over at the arm wrestling t uh, competition that's going over there she kind of like shakes her head and kind of like, ugh. And then she looks up at you and says, God damn it, that's a furry ass that I haven't expected to see in a while. Look, take a seat, you ugly bastard. She's totally, she's totally joking. No, I know she is. <laughs> so I sit down. He's down, it's like, actually, I shave. And he turns around and he's just a bare ass cat. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you <those> guys? <laughs> <laughs> you get pants. Some... So Istrid, uh, Istrid, um... assholes, chaps, and you just ah! <laughs> So Istrid, um, Istrid, uh, is not looking at you. She's looking at the thing that she's carving, and it looks to be the shape of a man, uh, or like some kind of humanoid. And she looks up at you after uh, while she's carving, and then looks back down at it. So what's you in the city for? Are you get into trouble? Mm, not trying to. Well, you must have came sit with me for a reason. What can I do you for? You need money again? Book needs information. Book needs information. All right. What you need information on? Uh, information on a gnome and a tentacle beard man. And she starts like, there's a lot of gnomes in the si I'm, s I'm sorry, what? Purple tentacle beard man. What kind of shit you got yourself into now, but... Uh, look, uh, if you think you saw a Mind Flayer, I think someone might be playing tricks on you, bud. Well, that's, if that's what I saw, then that's what I saw. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, look, things have been kind of crazy with my boys and, well, people I used to think were my boys. Uh, that what you saw could be a lot of things. You know what I mean? Well, I need to know what it was, because somebody has taken something that did not belong to them. Oh, yeah? What's that? Something of mine. All right. Keep your secrets, kid. Well, I can tell you that I don't know nothing about any gnome. Keep your secrets, <laughs> <laughs> My lord, that is book. He is not welcome here. Uh, you can keep your secrets, kid. But uh, I tell you right now, if you get entangled in Mind Flayer as well, uh, it sounds like you're making an enemy out of the Xanathar. It's uh, something you don't really want to be doing. I suggest you just take the loss of whatever you're doing and just kind of, well, find something else to do while you're in the sound. I think I can take the loss. <laughs> yeah, has, has, it been, has it been a hard time for Book? Kind of, I've, I've lost everything. I tell you what. Uh, you go ahead and get yourself into whatever kind of trouble you can think of. There's plenty of people looking to uh, grab some coin. I saw you come in with a rich fop on the way in anyway, but uh, you give me a couple days, I can see maybe I can cut you in. It's about time we got you in the Black Network formally. I don't know what you're speaking. Uh, you can roll me a history check if you want. No, no, that's... Like, he knows what you're speaking of. Oh. Well... Book does not know what you're speaking of. Wink, wink. Oh, okay. Hey. Book is an upstanding citizen. <laughs> yeah. He goes to brunch. 
And I'm the goddamn open Lord of Waterdeep. You're real cute, kid. Nice Nice to meet you, Lord of Waterdeep. (laughs) And I I bow. (laughs) And she laughs. Um, let me see. Gerolf, uh, you are, uh, did you go to sit with Volo or are you chatting up Dernan? I'm just chatting up Dernan. I'm probably, like, doing the thing where I'm, like, oversharing my story, you know? (laughs) Dernan is, go ahead. I started with, like, the past few hours and, like, everything that's happened. And then just kind of lapsed into how I got here. And And then you're, like, like, and then you're, like, seven, (laughs) you're, like, seven ales in. Exactly, yeah. (laughs) And Dernan takes everything you tell him with a stone face. Um, Like, the only thing that has, like, garnered even, like, a remote laugh from him was the thing about you coming in with Volo. And he seems to be very eager to put things on Volo's tab. And he's still cleaning his glasses, and he's like, You said, uh, you said, uh, Scornabelle? Yes, Scornabelle. It it was a great little place, and then... And then this this guy burned it down with a bunch of mean people. It wasn't it wasn't a good time. I was like seven, eight, maybe. I don't know. I I, I tried not. I tried to block that out. Seven or eight? You don't look like you're thirteen. That would make you like thirteen now. Oh, never mind. I mean, like, well, <laughs> no, it wouldn't because yeah. If 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 you're like in your mid past. That happened ten years before. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. I, I got. I got like my. Uh, yeah. You, you. You would be about like ten if you want to be like twenty now. Yeah. Exactly. It, like it happened. It happened at a young formative age. Got it. So. That's you know unfortunate. I got one of my best employees out of scoring a belt. Big or uh, big guy, green guy. It's a. Uh, Agnes. Come talk to this guy. And please Dernan, tell me, please tell me that my tea made it to freaking Waterdeep. Dernan uh, steps off to the side for a bit because there's a much busier group of people that is like ordering drinks, and you see a uh, half orc man uh, with a shirt that is barely being held together. The buttons are kind of like uh, resisting being popped. Raphael, and, and he looks at you, and one of his eyes is immediately like. Uh, evident that it is made like false it's a false eye and he slips you an eighth shadow dark ale and he says uh sorry it's uh been a real busy night tonight he just wants to make sure he gets to everybody My name's agnes what can i do for you what you talking about hey agnes thanks thanks for the drink i i was just telling our friend here about how i'm from scornabelle when well you know what well, used to be scornabelle and how I just want, I'm here trying to help out, you know? Scornbell's dead, kid. And he, uh, he's polishing a glass just like Dernan before him. And, um, uh, did you, did you frequent, um, did you, did you frequent, um, how do you say, uh, just bars whenever you were younger? Uh, I mean, I, I probably saw enough of them. I was kind of, I, I think that he probably was traveling a lot because... You know, they were, um... A lot of merchants. They were kind of in between places. Okay. So... Yeah, I I can imagine that he he saw a lot of bars in a lot of different towns, you know? Whether it it was the outside or the inside kind of depended on the situation. Right. So, you you don't quite recognize, uh, Agnes. Um... But, yeah, he's like... Scornabelle's dead. There's nothing for it. You know, we did get out of it, though. And he pushes forth a box of specifically labeled all natural tea uh what flavor is it mark uh morning dew morning dew morning dew tea um yeah and he takes it and he tips it over with like a sense of disgust rush what the what the (laughs) (laughs) Rush. Better. All Better right. Hope the freaking Ragnar dim- doesn't ever come back. <laughs> so, um, I need to roll me. Uh, oh, I need you to call higher low. Uh, low. All right. Roll that one again. All right. And Yagra does her best to resist the uh, 
to resist the the overwhelming strength uh, strength of Grognar Funch Piss the Barbarian, but Grognar eventually turns it and slams her uh, her hand into the table so hard that like a brick comes loose off of the uh, off of the portal, and Grognar stands up and holds his hands high and like um, God um Emily's showing me some weird shit on Fire Emblem, but anyway um. It raises his hands in victory, and people are like, Grog, Nar, Grog, Nar, Grog, Nar. Um, and Davil, the elf that you met earlier, uh, like, pats you on the back, and he's like, come here. And he goes over to Yagra, who is uh, getting back to her feet, and she's, like, drenched in sweat, and her muscles and her forehead are still, uh, like, scrunched a little bit. And she's like, that's the toughest goddamn fight I've had since I got to this pissy town. Hey, kid. Who's the kid? It was like, Yagra, my friend Rush. You two should get acquainted. And I, uh, I reach out and shake her hand, and as I do, I cast Shape Water to uh, remove the sweat off of her brow. So she grabs your hand and, like, crushes it because she doesn't really know her own strength, but um, yeah, she, like, lets go of it as soon as she feels this weird sensation in her hair. It's like, huh. You know, I should hire you to follow me around and do that every time I take get into a fight. My name's Yagra. What you here for, kid? Uh, oh, my name's Rush. Uh, I'm, uh... My I'm, uh, traveling... I was a hired hand with, uh, with a merchant, but I... I guess I couldn't find myself, uh... in between jobs right now. I, I'm originally from Baldur's Gate. And, uh... That sucks. Recent, yeah. I, um... Uh, I recently uh, converted to uh, the Church of Jermon, so you know I'm not well liked uh, from my previous temple. So, uh, like I said, kind of in between jobs, in between homes, uh, figured I'd make my slice of pie out here. And Davil uh, pats you on the back and he's like, "Hey, now, nothing wrong with a bit of a uh, Jermon in your life, right? Ah, you know that's a uh, you'll find it's pretty uh, freedom of religion out here in Waterdeep. You're in a good place, kid." And Yager's like, yeah, you're in a good place, kid. You want to arm wrestle? Um, and he just kind of looks around, like, kind of looking for his out. And he's like, uh, sure. <laughs> and she expectantly sits down at the side of the portal and raises her arm at you. And it is scary muscly. Yeah, but he, and he, like, Rush is trembling, but he's like, you know, he doesn't know how to get out of this situation. He's not really, you know versed in social interaction, so he's gonna go for it. Alright, roll me a strength check at disadvantage. Jesus, don't want to break your arm. <laughs> yeah, kinda. Uh, it is a 7. Alright, she rolled a 23. Honestly, if I hadn't been at disadvantage, I still have a loss, but it wouldn't have been bad. It was Nineteen. So. Yeah, you put you put up a decent fight, but you're freaked out by her muscles, and she doesn't have to strain much to slam you down. And now your hand is a little sore. You take one point of damage. Um, oh no, that's one eleventh of my health. <laughs> um, and she's like, hey, "You need to lift a little more, kid." Yeah, I'm uh, all this traveling. You know, I've been. It's you know, my legs are in shape, but I haven't really been able to get into lift. Uh, you know, I gotta get back into my workout routine now that I've, uh, you know, reached my destination. <laughs> That's good. You should never skip leg day. All right, let's see. Um, book, you still chatting with Istrid? No, I mean I I gave her what I needed. I told her what I needed her to find out. Right. So I guess it's about this time that you go and actually sit down with uh with Volo. I guess. So Volo, um, at. Uh, is sitting at the table waiting for you. If the rest of you guys um, want to go and sit down with a uh, book as well, you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rush is going to awkwardly look over. He's going to see the, the book sitting down with Bolo. And he's like, oh, my, my, uh, my friends, they look like they finally settled in. Uh, it was uh, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, and, and he kind of scurries off. Dabble's like, hey, if you ever need anything, Dabble Star Song's got you. No problem. All right, and Gerald, for you, come and sit down with Volo as well. Yeah, Gerald's gonna uh, get a glass of tea, and then stumble over and be like, "Hey, so I just met 
the bartender and the bartender's friend. I really like the bartender. But the bartender's friend is kind of a jerk, guys. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> you know? Vola laughs as you approach it. It's like, <laughs> you're my favorite kind of person. <laughs> okay, so, uh, where, where to begin? Where to begin? Uh, you three look new in Waterdeep. You know that, right? Uh, it's it's very obvious whenever uh, some newcomers come into town. Don't know the way of things, yeah? Well, what, am I right? Am I right? I, 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 I felt like I was acclimating pretty good. They they seemed to like me. Oh, they liked you. It's because they think they can get a coin from you. Maybe they, they could be your best friend. They could get all kinds of things from you if they ask nicely enough. I'm saying it's nothing wrong with making friends as long as they're friends like Volo Femkadon. Jokes on them. I'm poor. <laughs> so... And he looks you up and are you guys like wearing weapons like outwardly? Uh, uh yeah, Droll probably is. He's probably got his uh his like dagger on one side, like under his arm, and uh his rapier at the other side, and uh he's got his bow like slung across his back. Right. I I Question. kind of even though he is a cleric and he's a little more like decked out in fancy stuff like i still kind of envision him like not truly affiliated with the church of mm. jeremon you uh, could probably you... just like kind of like his like he's kind of figured like he doesn't know his own religion basically mm. so like he kind of just puts most of his stuff in his pack like he seems like a kind of like street rat teenager kind of vibe um you do know that uh if you ever want to broadcast your allegiance, you wear a red rose as like a sort of carnation. Oh, yeah, he would be doing that. Like he would, he would do like what's common, but he's not like truly affiliated with the church. Like he just kind of is like a worshiper that hasn't had a chance to meet up with the Church of Jeremon yet. Got and you know there there is kind of like an informal Church of Jeremon, but it's only been five years, so it's still kind of right. still kind of getting yeah. Flow. And that's kind of my vibe. Is it's kind of like. He doesn't know where to go like he's never done like he just like admires Jeremiah to the point where it's like a childhood worship kind of thing mm -hmm. so he um but as far as like his weapons and stuff it'd be kind of like in his bag like he wouldn't be like brandishing them on like he's not decked out in full regalia like it's just kind of he's kind of kind of angsty right so um Volo looks you guys up and down, checks like you know your your gear and stuff, and he's like, "You know, I've seen, I've read a lot of books in my time, been into a lot of uh, fancy places, but there's one thing that's always easy to pick apart. It's an adventurer, especially in the city of splendors. Uh, am I right? Because uh, because." <laughs> I could really use your help, you know. I really could. It's oh, it's terrible. Please, I, I need someone to help me, like as soon as as soon as possible. And he's like starting to tear up a little bit. Yeah, I get oh, up and start my Bolo, what's wrong? That's it's terrible. Oh, I was, I was drinking the other night, you know, uh, just just what one does. We were at the skewer dragon, and oh, my my dear friend, dear dear Floon, oh, he's. He's got more beauty than brains, you know, and, and I worry he took a bad way home a couple nights ago and he was kidnapped or worse. I, I, if you could track him down, I, I promise I could I can offer you ten dragons apiece now and, oh, I can give you ten times that when you find him apiece. Oh, please, I, I, I beg of you, can I prevail upon you in my time of need? You said you were, you were out drinking with him and he disappeared? Well, we drinking and then I left and then he stayed a bit longer. Well, I, just, I haven't seen him in quite some time, a few nights. It's so unlike Floon. I don't exactly do that sort of business. He did offer you 300 gold dragons for the entire thing, which is, um, which is more than enough money to eat for several years. Okay. So okay, did you here's, did here's here's how this is gonna go. Yeah. If we do this, I want half up front and half upon delivery. 
Make an insight check for me. That is way the wrong character. There it is. Behind all my text messages. Uh, that's an 18. 18. Yeah, um... You get the feeling that he, uh... How should I say this? Uh, da, 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 la, 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 la. Come on, come on, where is He's it? talking out his ass? He might be stretching the truth about how much he can pay. Well, I mean, I, I'm just waiting for the answer to half up front and half upon delivery. Now listen, listen. Yeah, strong bargain there. Uh, yeah, I can't go about handling 150 gold dragons out of my pocket now, can I? I'd get robbed faster than, well, any noble without that god retinue now, wouldn't I? No, listen. All I... right, then what do you have in your pocket? And I'll take that, and then I'll take the rest. Upon and me. he puts three bags out, and if you inspect them, they each contain 10 gold pieces. Listen, Volo, buddy. Here's the deal. I'm going to help you find your friend, and I'm going to poke him in the chest when I do it, and, and like, put my, my other arm around him, like, sitting next to him, and, like, put the arm around, poke him in the chest, and then I'm going to go, and then you, and I'm going to, like, boop him on the nose and, like, point to myself and be like, I'm going to write a book all about Scornabel and the history of Scornabel and how great it is in Scornabel. So that the people come back and we can make money again. Oh, my friend, you should read Volo's Guide to the Sword Coast. Oh, well, shame what happened to Scornabel, but it's, uh, it certainly has its own entry. You're going to help me resell it to the public. We got a plan. Here we go. And I'm going like, <laughs> to fall out of the booth. So you said something about how much was he offering beforehand? He said uh, 10 gold apiece. Um, now, and a hundred gold a piece upon completion. Okay, but what were you saying that he was offering before that? That's what he was three, offering. Three, three hundred, 300 total. total. Okay, I thought you said something like dragoons or something. No, dragon. Dragons. Okay, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, a gold coin is called a dragon in Waterdeep. Okay. Sorry. Good. So I grab, I grab all three of the bags and start heading off. Um, well... Uh, I, 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 I can use some scrap, like... We found it! We were at the Skewer Dragon! He says as you leave. <laughs> and Vola looks at you, Jarolf, in a rush. Uh, I, I, um... Jarolf, Jarolf is very unconscious on the table. Oh, good. Uh, and, and, uh, and Rush is looking around like, he's like, I, 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 I don't know what to do. Like, I, 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 I guess me and oh no we don't have the money though um all right i guess we're sleeping in the street gerald unless oh wait my buddy um can you guys spot me a place to let me and my friend a place to stay so he can sleep this one off uh dabble uh smiles and he's like all right but one night only don't make a habit out of it hon and uh i mean if my previous employer didn't like take everything i just earned I, I i i i think we'd be okay but um that happened <laughs> splitting the party at its fucking finest yeah um davil throws three silver at you which is enough to get a room shared between three people for a night um book you can head out by yourself but it is getting very late and you did just get jumped by like a maximum of 12 thugs earlier no, i got you i got you no i didn't necessarily like leave okay oh okay, okay. i thought you were like straight up yeah i thought you were and like and he out said the door he said away. he was where uh they went where? to the they went to the a tavern called the skewered dragon how far away from here is that um it's in the dock ward so it's like a it's an hour or two of a walk so you mean the place we just got mugged no, you guys were on the edge of the dock ward. Skewer oh, Dragon okay. is, like, in dock ward. But my ward. guy's also in the dock ward, right? No, um, so you guys were on the edge of dock ward, and then Volo took you back more towards, uh... The, 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 the Yawning Portal's, like, kind of in the center of the city, almost. No, um, I mean, my, my guy that I was supposed to deliver to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, um, he was in the dock ward, yes. 
He was um he was on a bar he was on a boat called the Scarlet Marpanoff. Cool. I should probably go see him. You can um you can go to the Scarlet Marpanoff now, but you'd be getting there at around like three in the morning. I will go see him in the morning. Cool. Alright, so you guys uh sleep for the night in uh, the yawning portal? I, I get up early and go see him. Okay. Like, before before drunken idiot over here's awake. Let me... Oh, yeah, they're all going to have to sleep this off. Roll a... Okay, yeah, nothing happens. Great. The Yoni Portal's a fun place to sleep at. Um, all right. Uh, roll, me a, roll me a constitution save, Gerald. I was like, what? <laughs> you were talking about me, and I'm like, oh, no, what? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, no. Straight up. Rush was too nervous that he didn't even remember to get a drink. Like, he was... It's he was an 11. Like, it's an 11. All right, yeah, um, if you want to get up early, you can, but you're going to be battling a headache for a good little bit. Charles wakes up when the sun comes up and goes, no, thank you, and just rolls back over for a while. <laughs> Rush, do you want to go with a book to the dock ward? Uh, yeah, sure, I think he's still kind of confused on what he, he needs to be doing, so it's still kind of a job, and he's figured out what he needs to do, so yeah, he's, uh, yeah. And so here's the fun part, I skulk her the whole way there. <laughs> I'm gonna say, honestly, Rush follows him and gets lost. Okay! Like, I think that's straight up what he would do, like, he would try to follow him and end up getting lost no, in, in the this, city. This is really good, we're gonna deal with that. Um... Let me see. I gotta figure out. Um, well, I guess I can try to follow him, but I, I don't. Yeah, think I'm you, go you, well. you can you can run me a investigation check to see. And uh, how about this? I want your investigation contested against um, Book's stealth. Yeah, I mean, because he would he would stealth. try like he wouldn't like he wouldn't try to get lost. I guess I just have a feeling that's just gonna happen. My, mm -hmm. my stealth is an unnet twenty. Okay. Well, it would have been close actually. I got an eighteen. All right, yeah. So you you actually do manage to like keep up with a uh, book for a good little bit, um, but you do lose him as you get into the dock ward. Um, so let's see. Uh, both of you guys roll initiative, so I know which one to, one of you to do first, because I know exactly what to do here. Eleven. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, rush. Um, you're stumbling through the dock ward, and the dock ward for lack of a better term smells like piss um it's 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 bustling with like um it's bustling with semen um no it's bustling with like <laughs> sailors and uh, and laborers and his general oh, drunk smells like piss no. um <laughs> but you do uh notice a shop with its doors open but the cool thing about this shop that you can see is in the entryway with the door open you see what appears to be a beholder. And you know what beholders are from, like, your... You know, you, you've read books. You, you generally get, like, the idea of what a beholder is. But if you take a closer look at it, it looks like it's stuffed. And uh, the sign to this shop says, Ye old Zablob Shop. Well, that's interesting. And I don't really know where I'm at, so I guess it doesn't hurt to ask for directions and inquire. And he's talk this is his outward monologue. Like, he's talking, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I get to do this. So, a cloud of lavender-scented purple smoke trails out of the shop's door as you peer inside. Every wall is painted purple, and every dusty knick-knack on the shelves is dyed a deep violet. The hairless old gnome sitting cross-legged upon the counter wears plum-colored robes, and his cheeks are decorated with nine purple-faced painted eyes. And the gnome lowers a pipe and exhales, uh, exhales a cloud of lavender smoke before raising a hand. Hail and well met! Come browse the shelves of this most curious curiosity shop in the world! Uh, yeah, um... I'm sorry, can we pause for a second? Tyler, could you just do that voice for everything now? <laughs> I'm old Zoblob! Come browse my mini purple wares! Kalu Kali! Oh no. Um, so, uh, hi, uh, my, my name's Rush. Uh, what, 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 what do you sell here? 
Oh, but I sell nothing but the finest purple wares, the most vivid violets, the most lovely wines. Oh, come, come, take a look, take a look. I've got bottles that are purple. I've got letters that are purple. I've even got swords that are purple. So, so, just, any, so, just, anything, so just anything that's purple? Oh, yes, if you name it and if I can paint it purple, it's here. I'm just thinking of that Rick and Morty episode with the doors that go nowhere guy. No, no, no. It's more like um, the pepper salesman uh, from... Give me a second. It's, I it's, was thinking... It, it's it's literally, it's literally um, Griffin McElroy playing Garfield the Deals Warlock. Um, let me see. This guy is my voice that I'm doing. Anyway, so do you, do you want to check around? Yeah, I mean, he'll look around and... Uh... He's just kind of like, um, well, I mean, do you, do you have a, um, a, like a, a, like a, a clearance section? Everything's on sale at the old Zomblob shop! Ah, oh. uh, well that's good, because, uh, I'm, like, I'm still trying to find some work, so, uh, it's, it's good, because I, I don't have much on me, because, uh, my former employer kind of made off with everything I've already earned in the city. So let's see. Uh, As you are shopping around, I, I love that I get to roll on this table. Um, 63. So you see a couple of things. Um, you see what appears to be a, a, a doll of a knight in full armor, except the armor is a vivid purple. Um, and it's titled... It has the name Barand um, tattooed, like, uh, written on the, uh, on the foot, much like a Woody's Andy. Um, you see what appears to be a stuffed squirrel, entirely purple, um, and very obviously painted purple. Like, it's not even like an attempt was made to make it subtle. Um, you see a map of Waterdeep, which is seems to be drawn entirely in purple, varying shades of purple ink. Um, and... Last thing you see is, you see a small rodent's heart. It's still beating, and it's purple. Uh, how much for that map there? Oh, it could be yours for but a mere five silver pieces. Quite a steal, if you don't think. Five, five what pieces? You can't cut out. Five Sil what? Silver pieces. Uh, okay, and uh, why is that heart still beating? That is the heart of the and he's like counting on his fingers like that is the heart of a cranium rat it's very easy to remove it as long as you keep it near other cranium rats it'll keep eating so what you're saying is there, there's, there's rats everywhere oh yes and they're all very intelligent very good for conversation for old zomblob huh well, well that's that's fun um and anything special with the other items? This is knights and uh, doll. They're purple. They are purple. I, I will give you that. Like, I believe uh, this one's actually got kind of like a periwinkle vibe to it. Like, you get out of uh, my store right now, you piece of shit! There's nothing, <laughs> goddamn periwinkle here. It's purple. It is violet. It's purple, though, is it not? No, it's blue. Periwinkle uh, is a very light shade of blue, and I would not be slandered here in my own store. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I think I'm confusing colors. Maybe it's, it's like a lavender. I, I apologize. Ooh, I'm not ooh, tell him you're colorblind. <laughs> you can roll persuasion to tell Zoblob that you're colorblind. Yes. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> just actually, see, just see how that it goes. Is, it is trickery. Like, I'll, I'll give you advantage on it. Yeah, he's trickery. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. You know, periwinkle to me appears as a shade of purple. Uh, so that is twenty-two. Oh yeah. Ah, you must be stricken with the the dreaded curse of color blindness. Well, no, I assure you I, that. I, I I mean, I just see my blues as like a dark, I, like what you would call blues. So is it really such a big deal that I, you know, I, I see more purple in the world? 
the chosen one that reveals himself. And Zoblob jumps off of the fucking, and he's wearing a he's wearing a uh, a beholder like hat kind of, and he gets down on the floor and starts bowing before you. <laughs> it, he's just like this three foot tall deep gnome, uh, just like he's just going, he's bowing before you. So, all right, now now that, you know, we've gotten that out of the way, I, I didn't know if you were a true believer, so I had to, you know, I had to test you. Um, now that we got that out of the way, um, like, I, I, I could use that map, you know, I need to, in order for me to finish my quest, I need to know the lay of the land a little bit more. Oh, uh, yes, it's yours for five silver pieces, chosen one. I'm the chosen one. And the chosen one still has to pay for shit. <laughs> Alright, fine. I guess you won't be your uh, name won't go in the in the history books with the chosen one. The only book that I want my name in is my goddamn log. Uh, fucking uh what what is the name of uh of the book that business keepers keep? Shit. I, I was trying to find the word while I was saying that and it, it lost me. My ledger uh. All right, I, I I can respect that. Uh, so he he throws uh, the five silver pieces. All right, and, and you now have a purple map of Waterdeep, which is beautifully detailed, I may add. Um, and we'll pretty much tell you uh, where anything you need to know is. Uh, generally speaking, like large landmarks and what each ward of the city is uh, named, and you can easily find your way to the docks from here. Okay. Um, and, you know, while, while I, I'm here, now that we've gotten that out of the way, and, you know, like I said, the formalities and the test is done, do you have any, anything that would aid in my quest that is purple? Hmm, I may have something, and, uh, ch -ch -ch, let's see, and he digs behind a, uh, he digs behind a... Fuck, where'd my other D2 go? Shit, shit, shit. Oh, it went under my goddamn carpet. Whatever, I'll get it later. Um, so... Has threads, just saying. Whatever, fuck you. Um, so, yeah, he produces two things. He produces a vial of purple liquid and a letter, which is of normal color, but it bears a purple lipstick kiss on it. You never know when you might need a talks of rumor you never know what uh information could buy and this i don't know what the fuck this does and he points to the bottle oh. it's very That's... clearly it's very clearly like a potion it's slightly glowing yeah no i mean i i, I appreciate your generosity you scared the shit out of me i didn't know you were in the room in the room for like five or ten minutes. Really? You've been listening to me yell like that? Yes, you I have a headache. Stealthy. I'm sorry. I'll try to be quieter. Zoblob's almost gone. Don't worry. What? It's fine. Yeah, and then he's just like, yeah, no, I appreciate your generosity, and he just starts reaching for it all. And he, let me. Yeah, he lets you have it. Okay. Um... Also, one one last thing, and I'll pay you for this. Now that you know the secrets out, like. You know, as you can tell, my my purple wares are starting to dull out a little bit. Could you uh, could you top me off? And he just kind of points at like his uh, his armor and his mace and stuff. It's like you make me re-purple. Zoblob twiddles his fingers in the air, and a brilliant purple magic sigil appears before him, and a wave of energy is cast over you, and as it goes down you are um do you remember that scene in uh cinderella where um like the the fairy godmother casts a spell on her and she's covered in a dress as it goes down yeah yeah yeah, yeah that shit happens to you except it turns all your clothing and all of your skin a beautiful shade of purple you said my stuff and my skin your skin and your clothes yes pretty much anything okay. that is visible on you your hair as well but it's all like the same shades like you know coloration wise mm -hmm. The only thing that he asks is to, to maintain, like, the roses red, but everything else is purple. And he's like, eh, suit yourself, not everyone has good taste. And he makes it red again. 
yes, no, this is this is perfect. I, I you know, now I now I can continue on with the mission. For the next day, you have disadvantage on all stealth checks. <laughs> all right, I mean, that's fine. Book. So okay, it was the, oh yeah, go the ahead. Potion. Yeah, you potion, have an and what was the other thing? unidentified potion, and you have a letter with a purple kiss on it, a lipstick kiss on it, which you can open and read right now if you want. Yeah, sure, why not? Whenever you open it, um, it reads the following. It appears to be an invitation. You are cordially invited to the Grand Ball in Growlhound Manor. Um, formal dress required for the wedding of Lady Growlhound. And it is dated uh, five years ago. Okay. All right. Y'all done over here? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just going to kind of look at the map and uh, I guess uh, kind of just assume that I've lost the, the trail on on book and just kind of use the map to get back to the, the yawning portal. Okay. Book. Um, you make your way to the dock ward, the edge of the actual docks of the dock ward, and uh, the Scarlet Marpanoth is not very difficult to find. Um, and let me see here. Uh, ch -ch 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 Hello. Hi. Am I am I dropping out for you guys? Hello. Hey, am I coming through for you guys? You're an kind of, you're, you're robot -y, but... That's interesting and strange, and I don't like it. Uh, how are we doing now? That's better. Right. Agoo. Give me a second. Let's do this. Maybe this will work better. Alright, how am I doing now? Yeah, that sounds good. Alright, sweet. Sounds All right. good to me. So, book. You, mm -hmm. um, excuse me. Mm. You make your way down to the dock ward. And you find uh, the Scarlet Marpanoff pretty easily. Um, and you see it and two sister ships um, docked at a, at like a private little dock. And you see guards guarding the walkways to get aboard the ships. Um, it should it should be noted by the way that the Scarlet Marpanoff is a massive ship um, that doesn't seem to be entirely over the water. Um, as a matter of fact, it uh, it seems to be uh, a large body of it is made of metal um, and resides beneath the waves. And <clears throat> the only thing that uh, you see people on top of it is like an observation deck on the top of it. Hmm. Wait. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down a note, um, stating that uh, your package will arrive later than uh, <coughs> previously stated. Um, if you would like to voice any of your concerns, uh. You may speak with Volo. And whatever his last name is, because I don't remember. Volothamp Gadarm. Let me uh, type yeah. that for you. Wow, you skeezy son of a bitch. I love you. Um, let me and, see. And I... Do you have any concerns? You can uh, go fuck yourself. <laughs> with regards. Well, no, there are no names. All right, and you just, below the do you give this to one of the guards, or do you try yes, to... Yes, to give to their... All right. To give to their boss. Um, what's your passive perception again? 14. All right, yeah, um, you don't notice anything as you bring the note up to the guard, and it's like a, he's like a slender-looking, like, uh, sun elf, and he looks down and he takes it. A pleasure. You should try the you should try the pineapple. I hear it's lovely this time of year. Pineapple? I, I don't follow. And he smiles. You like to speak to the captain? No, I'm just here to deliver a note. 
Fair enough. This is what I was instructed to do. Captain Zardar Zod will be awaiting further news. Oh, I will we'll let my boss know. Alright. Gerald. So um you're sleeping, I guess, till like the later morning, or do you just like chill until like the noon? Josh, he's, he's sleeping. Oh, um. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 Gerald. <laughs> yeah, I zoned out for a second. <laughs> it's okay, uh, buddy. It's fine. There's been lots of talking about Gerald. Uh, so Gerald's gonna wake up like maybe around like nine or ten o'clock. All right. And kind of get up and stretch and w get dressed and wander out of the building. All right. And you know he's got like vague memories of the stuff that happened the night before. Um, he remembers meeting Bolo. He remembers getting a lot of drinks for free from Bolo. He remembers being sad and then happy again and Bolo asking him to go do something. And he thinks he remembers some him. He's like supposed to be looking for somebody, but he doesn't know who. Uh, and so he's just going to kind of wander out and see what he can find. So, um, Rush, you said you were going back to the Yoni Portal? Yeah. Yeah, so it's about this time whenever you, uh, step out of the Yoni Portal, and even though it's in the morning, it's still, like, pretty bustling. It seems like the place just never calms down. Um, Gerald, you step out, and Rush is coming back to the building around this time, and the two of you meet, like, just about in the street in front of the Yoni Portal. Keep in mind, I'm straight up purple. Yeah, 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 Rush is purple now. Hey, Rose, you were not that color yesterday. Uh, you feeling okay, buddy? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, maybe you, uh, maybe that hangover was a little worse than you think, bud. You're not wrong. Uh, I've never heard of a hangover making one specific person change color, but, you know, <laughs> maybe it was the ale. <laughs> Glitch in the Matrix or something. I don't know. Is he also wearing a red dress? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and Jarl's like, so could you just catch me up on whatever we're supposed to be doing for Volo again? I remember him crying or something, and yeah, yeah, I wanted yeah, yeah. to write a book or something dumb. I was really drunk. Like, yeah, no, you started talking about, like, Bornabel being around and uh, none of us had the heart to tell you that's not a thing uh, yeah 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 I know that that's uh, something I'm mostly trying to change uh, but that's not important right now I'm just worried I guess about some of us do, I guess some of us do have bigger ambitions than others but you know in childhood home gets burned down around you sometimes you just uh, want to see something right in the world so uh, I guess you're. I guess you're right. You know, uh, but we'll worry about that later. Uh, yeah, the gist of it is, uh, him and a buddy went drinking, and uh, he hasn't seen his buddy since. Well, I guess that's pretty easy. Why don't we just check every ditch in the city? I guess, like, I, I honestly, uh, I was kind of overwhelmed. I didn't. We didn't even really think to ask, like, if he had checked like his house or anything. Like, we got a lot of groundwork to do, honestly. Yeah, maybe we just talk to Volo, talk to some of the people who know him. Maybe the bartender or somebody in the, the Yawning Portal knows him, and we poke around some of his normal drinking holes and stuff and yeah, he see what kind of info we can he, turn he, out. He, he told us the bar he was at. What was the name of the bar again? Uh, the one that uh, Volo and them went to? Yeah. The Skewered Dragon. Yeah, he said check the Skewered Dragon. Like, it's where, like, the last place he saw us. So, I mean, yeah, we got, we got a little bit of a lead, but, I mean, like I said, we got quite a bit of the groundwork to to cover on this one my my, yeah. my accent my accent makes it really hard to say it's the skewered skewered skew skewered yeah okay. sorry but my, that, that's a hard word for me to say maybe we just go poke around there for a minute and see where he went uh yeah that's fine yeah and, and book's been pretty sketchy too so there's that <laughs> yeah i'm not really worried about book right now i hope you 
God. He, he, in those damn Book's, cats. Book's already there, by the way. That was the second stop. <laughs> he was already in the area. Those damn cats just kind of turn up wherever they no, want to. No, we'll find him. He, he literally, uh, like, walks up on us. Like, I just didn't see Oh, damn it. Didn't see you there. <laughs> God, I... No, I went to the Skewered Dragon. Oh, okay. I lo- so, you guys... I was, in, I was in that neighborhood. So, you guys um, all end up... Like, Book, you walk into the Skewered Dragon, uh, like, just a couple minutes, like, like a minute or two before Rush... Uh, well, before Gerald and a very purple Rush uh, walk right in as well. Um, and let me see here. Where is it? Where is it? I need to find the thing. Sorry, give me just a second. This might happen a couple times because this book is huge. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fun one. I haven't read it, but I've looked at it. And I'm like, man, I just like I gotta wait until I've played it and then I can dive into it. Tyler, I just came up with a great story beat for later, but we'll talk about it after the we're done. You got it, buddy. All right. Um. So let's see the little text part. The skewer dragon looks like a ruin. Both of its front facing windows are smashed, and a ship's anchor is lodged in the roof. Through the windows, you can see a group of haggard patrons drinking from huge tankards. All right. Yeah, this looks like a place that we get drunk and get lost in. Uh, let's go poke around and see if anybody knows the guy. Should we? Yeah. Do we even know his name? Do we know? Uh, we know do, it's his name. Should do his some, some it, character research. You, you were looking for Floon? It's Floon. Lagmar. What is what is what is Josh's character's name so that I can make sure that I know because we don't have them all changed in the in the Discord. It's Gerald. Oh yeah, I should G- probably G- do that. Gerald. J. Gerald with an F. Yes. Okay. Okay. Gerald. So, yeah. With Gerald, a J. Per- perhaps we could do some some character research here. We know that he got drunk. Perhaps we should get another person drunk and see what happens to them. I mean, if it's not me, that's fine. I'll roll that persuasion if I can. Still very hungover. Wait, so who you're trying to persuade? Gerald to go get drunk, get out of my way. You don't have to roll persuasion. That's it's it's a player. Okay, so <laughs> it, it is if he doesn't want to do it. Uh, no, I don't. I, I don't do that for players. You, 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 don't, the, you don't, yeah, don't. yeah, yeah. No, you, you you can persuade him by being persuasive. Okay. So to help to help with our investigation, perhaps it would would help if we had somebody to act as Mr. Floon and get drunk and see where they wander off to. And I give him free gold. The, sh- the shittiest I mean, science. Volunteering? I'm not drinking again. I, I rarely what? drink as it is. Last night was a but, kind but of a on one-off me. thing. I mean, I did. I, I mean, if if we're using bait, wouldn't it be better if like the people investigating aren't bait? I mean, the more eyes, the better. But does he really have eyes? Right now? Yes. Y- yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah, I think some purple, but there's nothing like I. Other than that, he seems okay. Fair enough. All right, so give me the give me the rundown of what you guys are doing. Well, I was gonna just try to get Geralt drunk and see what he does. Th- there, there are people. Geralt is just gonna walk over to the bar and order a coffee, and look at the barkeep and be like, "Do you know this guy? This Floon guy uh, hangs out with Bolo sometimes." So, the impossibly old lady working the uh, working the bar looks at you and is like. What the fuck's a coffee? Not, not, we serve ale here, numb nuts. <laughs> this is this is why I hate leaving. This is why I hate leaving these Cornerville. This is why I hate leaving in Baldur's Gate. Nobody knows what a fucking cup of coffee is. Okay, lady, a glass of water then. And do you know what a fucking flume is? There you go, pussy lips, and she gives you a cup of water. <laughs> and she By the gods. And she and she's like You talking about floon? Uh roll me roll me a persuasion. I almost said at disadvantage, but that would be too mean. Uh seventeen on persuasion. Oh yeah. Uh Floon was there before. Him and his his uppity friend. 
uh, fucking Renair. Fucking chip on the old blog, that one. Another spoiled rich noble who likes to rub our noses in it. I know, yeah. Hey, uh, came with their little friend. And came with his little friend. Then his friend left, and the next friend came. And, uh, well, they left, and they got followed by a bunch of men. Snake, ta uh, snake tattoos on their necks. You know, black network. Do you know, by any chance, where Floon lives? Floon, well, he, well, he works. Uh, I think he lives at the portal. He's he a wait. At the portal. He's a waitress or a waiter, whatever. Th this old, this, there. this old lady is quickly becoming John Mulaney. Um. <laughs> well, have you seen John Mulaney? He's kind of like an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Servers live at the fucking place they work, dipshit. And and this is a very uh, the, wonderful town. The, the snake snake tattoos, like which or which faction are we talking about? People who have winged snakes, Black Network, you know. Uh, I'm I'm new here, and sorry, I, I'm not familiar with. You're new uh, here, and you're looking for the Black Network. You ain't gonna last a goddamn day, purple shit. He, and Charles gonna go. Okay, I'm tired of your shit. He's gonna down the whole glass of water, and <laughs> look at the other two and be like, "I'm going back to the portal to poke around for our guy. You go find leads on this black bullshit, and I'll see you tonight." And he's just gonna leave. Book, you can book. You can do a, a history check at advantage for the black network. Hopefully, it's not a large. Check. We're level one, so I'd hope not. Any fourteen. Fourteen. The Black Network is another name for the Zentarum. Uh, the Zentarum is a global crime uh, syndicate. Um, that it's essentially fantasy yakuza. Um, they operate a lot of. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, they they operate a lot of black markets. Um, operate a lot of mercenary contracts. They're typically referred to on the down low as the Black Network whenever people don't want to say Zentarum out loud. Um, and it's not uncommon for them to you know. They they don't um do like violent crimes very often, but if they need to, they absolutely will. So I uh, pull out a, a dragon. That's what you call them, right? Dragons? Gold dragon, yes. Yeah, I pull out a dragon and hold it up to her. We were never here now. You were never here! Uh, oh, shit. I, 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 I had to, like, come up with, like, a, a, an insulting name off the top of my head, but the only thing that came up was pointy penis. And I hate that because you're a cat. <laughs> I think I'll go with Spike Dick! I mean, pencil dick probably. Pencil dick, pencil dick, yay! You did it, Josh. Oh my god! And I, I just, <laughs> Giraffe just wants out. <laughs> no, I just, I just say to her as I'm leaving, may you live another thousand years. Yeah, fuck you too. All right, so you, um, you guys do, leave. Do, this... do, Good. Do you think she could live another like quarter of her life? Thousand years quarter, implying she's four thousand. Boo. I know. Well, I'm invisible, <laughs> and I feel I mean, like death it, would be too easy. Dead, deadpan, deadpan jokes for like naive kid, like no bitch. And the funny thing is that um, if you guys were to stay around long enough and like know this lady's name, her name is Dead Pam. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right, Girl, so girlfriend brought me ice cream, so I got ice cream now. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So I need to contact my person again. Uh, Istrid is probably, um, and she mentioned being with the Black Network uh, the other night. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Istrid could probably be found at the portal, or she um, she does operate like a lending service somewhere in the in uh, South Ward. Well, well, yeah, I mean my thing says I know how to get to her. Yeah. So you can either try the portal, or you can try South Ward. Um, let's let's go to let's go to the portal again because the portal's fun. Um, I love yeah, the portal. Yeah, they're all there anyway. I hope you guys hang out of the portal a lot. It is so good. Um, so I'm gonna burn the portal down. 
uh, you will get like killed by everyone who was ever an adventurer in any iteration of Waterdeep ever. People love the portal. I mean, will the portal be burned down? No. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I won't. Portal's like magically protected. It's a lot of shit going on with the portal, like way more than you know. Um, so you guys uh, re-enter the portal, and you guys are making your way through um, to the bar when all of a sudden you hear something that sounds like uh, long nails on stone coming from the titular portal in the middle of the bar. That's awesome. You guys take a look or you just kind of hang back? Oh yeah, no. Rush is like head over like hanging out over like the edge looking. Make a dexterity save for me. Yeah. Just what I needed. Let me die today. <laughs> Um, oof, and that's not something I'm great at either. Okay, we're good though. Not 20. Oh, excellent. Um, something tips you off about a giant furry green claw that comes swiping up at your face, and you tumble backwards and actually make like a cool, like, backwards cartwheel out of it, um, as a impossibly lanky ugly furry creature claws its way out um, and bares its teeth with its huge long snotty nose and you hear Dernan from the back of the uh, bar um, and if you're looking at him he looks kind of bored as he grabs a glowing greatsword from underneath the, uh, the bar and he yells troll <laughs> alright you guys can roll initiative Ross just looks at it just shaking his head he's like come on man let me it's a non-nat 20 non-nat 20 for book mine is also a non-nat 20 what is your dex mods probably higher than mine probably uh four yeah it's higher than Gerald from book eight troll dernan rush rush is kind of slow yeah <laughs> I just got he is a, it. He is, an, he is a, an 11 in debt, so. You know, you're a cleric. All right. Yeah. I do cleric things, which I is weird for me. I haven't a single cleric thing yet. Dernan, uh, I mean, go ahead. I mean, I did bard things earlier by, you know, profess. Well, no, I do cleric things. I profess myself to be the chosen one. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> so, exactly cleric thing. Dernan with his great sword drawn... Um, and he's wearing, like, just barkeep clothes. He's not armored whatsoever. But um, he looks and he says, One of you go get the oil behind the... Uh, one of you go get the oil on the other side of the room. The other one of you get some fire. Gerald, it is your turn. All right. Uh, how far am I from the oil? From the oil? Uh, you can use your movement to get to it. Okay, I'll just move up to it and grab it. All right. And then, uh... Is it in, like, a breakable jar? Yeah, it's like a little flask. It's it's kind of funny. Whenever you get to like the barrel that it, uh, that it's on, you see a little sign um, with a bunch of little vials around it that says "Breaking Case of Troll." Cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna break it and grab some and like huck them at the troll. Okay. Yeah. Um, make a range attack roll for me using your decks. Uh, Seventeen. Oh, yeah. So, um, you clock the troll over the head with, uh, one of these vials of oil, and it, uh, it hisses and makes a, like, a weird monkey-like noise, like, <laughs> and it looks at you. Um, book. Question, how big is that hole? The yawning portal? It's, it's big. Yeah, it's about, like, 25, 30 feet across. Uh, across or diameter? Or across. Like all the way across it is massive. It's like if you filled that with water, it would be like a large swimming pool. Who who all is in here right now? Um, so like Dernan and the three of you are engaged with combat. The current clientele seems to be mostly non-adventurers right now because it's the breakfast crowd. Um, mo most adventurers are out doing other things. Okay. So a is lot of like non-combatants. Is the troll like still like climbing up? Or is no, no. The down? troll the troll is on his feet on the edge of the portal. So I'm going to cast sleep. Okay. 
in, in the best way possible to get only the troll. It's uh, creatures within 20 feet of a You could, you, given how big the portal is, you could definitely do that. Cool. cool. I don't uh, know yeah. how much health this thing has, so... <laughs> 28? Yeah, I'm sorry, that's not even half. I didn't, I didn't figure it was, but I figured I'd give it a shot. Yeah. Alright. The troll is going to meander over to, and he's like, his arms are swinging, and he knocks over a couple tables, um, and he takes a big old swing at Gerald. Heck off. His first attack <laughs> definitely does not work. He bites at you, but he, you are uh, able to dodge out of the way. Then he swings one of his huge claws. Uh, what's your AC? Who? Jeroff. Really? That's probably 15. Yeah. All right, you take 10 slashing damage. Uh-oh. <laughs> and he swings another claw at you for a nat 1. He, oh, um... Just throw the fucking fire at him. <laughs> so he, um... Yeah, he... Swings his claw, and it gets stuck in one of the uh, nearby walls. Um, in stone, mind you. Let's see. Dernan is going to basically, and without a war cry, without so he kind of almost like meanders over, like it, like this is every fucking day to him. And he swings with his great sword. First one hits for fourteen damage, and then his second attack hits for eight damage, and his third attack is a crit, my god, Dernan. Let's say 13 and 14. All right, Dernan. All right, yeah, so Dernan, like, goes up and sees that this troll is stuck, and he slices across the chest, gets a combo on the leg, and then does an upper swing that severs the troll's uh, uh, standing arm, not the one that is uh, stuck in the, uh, in the wall. All right. Rush, it is your turn. Alright, bonus action, cast Sanctuary on Gerald. Okay. So, anytime that he tries to, any they try to attack you, they have to make a wisdom save. If it fails, they have to target something else. Gotcha. Uh, it, it ends if if the warded creature makes an attack, casts a spell on the, uh, that affects the enemy, or deals damage to another creature. Gotcha. So basically, you just can't hit the troll if you want the protection, Josh. Oh, don't worry. We're not doing any of that right now. <laughs> yeah, and they kind of suck at wisdom, so that's a good move. And bonus... A oh, no, sorry. That was my bonus action. Regular action, Sacred Flame. All right. Even though this does radiant damage, I'll still treat it as fire. Oh, that's fair. Uh, so, 14 deck save. 14 deck save. Let's see. Okay, he fails. A hey, so D eight. So that is five. So five damage. Okay. So let me see. Plus fifteen plus eight. All right, and then he said eight. Uh, no, it was the D eight, so it's five. Okay, gotcha. Five is what I rolled. Yeah. So, your flame uh, ignites the uh, the oil that was on top of him. Uh, dealing an additional 12 damage um, as he is lit aflame. And you see as the flame spreads across his body and starts to sizzle uh, all the hair off of it, you see that the arm that Dernan cut off was already starting to grow back like within the couple seconds that it happened. But as soon as it is lit on fire, the regeneration stops. Like a cauterized kind of thing? Or like just... Um, more like it just like, it's uh, it's it, uh, it's hard to compare something to it, but yeah, yeah, it kind of it kind of cauterizes the skin, starts to sizzle, and the re the regenerating arm like stops. It's kind he has kind of like a little baby hand. Okay, cool. Geralt, it is you. Geralt's just like, Aah! yeah, you're just like you're <laughs> you're bleeding pretty bad. Run to the other side of the portal from. Or it's just as far away from this troll as he can get. We're gonna double move away. Okay, cool. 
book your go. What a move. Trying to remember that I'm not that kind of criminal. Because I'm pretty sure the bar's unmanned. I mean, you can try. That's what I said. I had to remind myself that I'm not. That is one of my favorite things to say as a DM, by the way. Uh, I need a. What the hell is it? A he fails. Okay. Okay. I just rolled. Cool. He rolled a two. Cool. So he needs to take three d six psychic damage. Three d six. Roll it. You're casting my favorite bard spell, by the way. Am I? Oh yeah, Dissonant Whispers is fucking awesome. You mean you ain't one of the vicious mockery people? Uh, twelve. Okay, the troll's head explodes. Basically, the troll is stuck and it's trying to wrest itself free from the fire and the wall, and then its head starts to va uh, vibrate my uh, madly, and then poof, an explosion of green blood, and um. Durnan, like, just stands there and just kind of, like, takes the shower of green blood unflinching, and he goes and he's like, huh. It was faster than the last one. Good work, boys. And he goes and puts his, uh... He puts his, uh, great sword back behind the bar and gets a... <laughs> and gets a rag and starts wiping himself off and he says... <clears throat> oh, God, what's her name? Uh, Bonnie! Get this kid a potion! In uh, you see a, you see a very attractive young woman, uh, blonde, curly hair, and she's wearing like a barmaid's outfit that is purposely pushing her cleavage up a little bit. Um, comes with you with uh with a plate that has like a couple red potions on it. Here you go, love. He's gonna go. Uh, oh, hello. How's it going? <laughs> Hey, you look like you're a little hurt there. Why don't you go ahead and yes, take one I of these? I love one of these, thank Why you. Why don't you go ahead and take one of these and call me in the morning? I will call you anytime you want. Thank you. I'm just going to take it and get, she, start chugging the potion. She wiggles her eyelashes at you and gets back to work. All right. Uh, how's everyone doing on time, by the way? I'm on vacation. I'm unemployed. Yeah, right. I'm okay for a little bit more. Okay, as long as everyone's good. I mean, if you guys want to break here and come see the fancy things in Minecraft. <laughs> I mean, I'm up for, like, all night anyway, so I can do that whenever. Well, but I, I really want Josh to see it, too, and I know he's not up for it. Josh, you want to do a little more D&D, &D, or you want to call it and uh, do some Murnkerf? It doesn't matter to me, dude. I can probably stay up till about you know, 11 or 12 o'clock, but I can't stay up much past that. Absolute fuck. So, right. yeah, let's... Uh, it's not working right for me. It's fine. Um, we can... How about we, uh, how about we carry this on till, let's say, two, uh, 10.30? That's fine. Cool with you guys? All right, cool. So, yeah, you guys, uh, are in the Yoni portal, and Dernan is, uh, basically just wiping himself down with, uh, with a cloth, and it's, it's like he's not even really worried about the, uh... About getting all of it off, he's just trying to get it off his face. What would you guys like to do? If you want me to describe who's currently in the bar right now, just let me know. Oh, I need to go talk to what's-her-face. Oh, Istrid. Yeah, Istrid is sitting there. She seems to have been uh, whittling away. As a matter of fact, she's sitting at one of the tables that was overturned. She's just still in her chair, just kind of like whittling, like as if nothing happened. Cool. So, uh, that's fine with me. I mean, I don't care. But I, I go up to her and I'm like, uh, so hey, you know that, what, what, what was it called? The black market or whatever? Battle the market? black network. Black network people? Yeah, what about them? Yeah, apparently they, uh, abducted a the man. They did what now? Abducted a the man. And she takes the whittling knife that she has and she sticks it into the side of the table that has been turned over. So it's not like a very assertive action, but she still does it. <laughs> um, she just leans forward, and she says, Now you listen to me. 
my people had nothing to do with any abduction, with any kidnapping, no manhandling. The Doom Raiders are not out killing people. I take it you're not privy to the, the current state of things with the Black Network in town, are you? No, but I'm just I'm just telling you what I've heard. There's a bit of a per, per, person missing person that I'm working on. The, the job that I'm on. Well, there's a. They mentioned snake tattoos. I can't re exactly remember how you describe the tattoos. Winged snake tattoos. Winged snake tattoos. So Istrid, um, being a dwarf, doesn't really have to like meander much. She just kind of turns around and lifts the hair off of the back of her neck and shows you a black snake tattoo on it, uh, the back of her neck. But she pull puts her hair back down and says, "There's a bit of a fundamental divide in the Black Network around Waterdeep right now." There's uh, some old intentions came rising back up, and, well, a lot of us, my people, the Doom Raiders, they, uh, we want to go, for lack of a better word, legitimate. Y you understand all about that, right, Book? Yeah. Yeah. These old people, they ain't like me. They ain't like me and my boys. So... Anyone going around calling themselves the Black Network, well, that's not my people. But, uh, you want to cause trouble for them and go get yourself killed, he'd be my guest. I know where they typically hang out. Maybe they took I'm your man over there. to finish a job. Alright. So, I guess, yeah. If you get cut up, don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, so, the Black Network, the imposters... They got a hideout in a castle, castle lane, out in the dock ward. Uh, it's a old, rundown warehouse, two stories. Uh, floor plan, kind of standard hideout stuff. Look for some hidden entrances. Maybe try to get in from one of the uh, from one of the top floor windows. You know that usual stuff. They're going to have lookouts on the ground floor, but maybe they got your man somewhere else. So yeah, hideout, warehouse, castle lane. Good enough for you? Works for me. I'll figure out what I can. Who's the guy you're looking for? To make sure that he's, like... Just to make sure that I understand that I don't make this mistake again. Yeah. These are not your people. Not my people. If so we I were... Them. What? What? <laughs> what? Hey, you listen real closely. Doom Raiders don't kidnap people. Unless they got it coming. But if I knew about anyone who had it coming, well, I'd know about it. And I don't know about anything with these people. Who are you looking for? Uh, Foon Bl Blagmar? Oh, yeah. He's a, it's a real sweet treat, that one. Hangs out with, uh, with his noble buddy, Renair. You know, those two kind of look like they could be brothers. It's weird. Oh, great. Yep, I know what's going on now. Yeah, well, good luck with that. By, by, by any chance was, did you say Renair? Renair Never Ember, yeah. You don't know well, about him? by any chance... Uh, scheduled to be uh, taken. taken. Taken? You accusing me of kidnapping? Not you. Not you. But if they look similar and Bloom was seen taken by these people, maybe they were meant to take the other one. Hey, you know, I guess now that you say it, it's possible. I mean, Renair's, Renair's a noble, but he's uh, not just any noble. I mean, his, uh, well, his dad is Daggled never ember. Um, any of you guys can make history checks for me if you yes, would like I, to. I know this guy, the the famous um, oil monger. Oil? <laughs> no, no, he's the fucking he's the Lord of Neverwinter, dumbass. See, I don't make I don't make checks. I just make. I just <laughs> you just make jokes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I meant. No. If anyone wants to kidnap the Prince of Neverwinter, then well, that's uh, that's their asses on the line. I hear that 
father and son aren't on speaking terms anymore, but, you know, there's still money to be had. You take on with some pretty uh, up there forces, Chief. You uh, best uh, watch your... And she looks you up and down. Your tail. This is my life. Like... Yeah, sure. Somewhere along the line, I ask, I ask myself, why? Don't we all? Hey, you need a loan or anything? I got a bunch of dragons, like, burning a hole in my pocket. Well, here's my question. If I take this loan, what's the interest when you want it back? 10% 10 day. 10% 10 days? No, 10% to the 10 day. You pay back when I tell you to. She's saying it's a 10% It's a ten percent interest rate every 10 days. Oh, and then I just pay you back. Yeah, pretty much. Um... I might, I, I'm, I personally might not want, might not want one right now, but I'm pretty sure, uh, Volathamp Gadarm is in need of money. You might pick him up. If she starts laughing, she's like, ha! <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll burn that bridge when I come to it, all right? Sure thing, yeah. Glad that you have verified some of my suspicions. Good luck with your good luck with your task, buddy. You're gonna need it. Right to you. Anything uh, right. the other bunch of you guys would like to do? Uh no. Nice slash. Rush, you got anything? Uh he's still just kind of like looking like what what the fuck was that troll? Like he's not even like so he's just kind of standing there like mouth open like what the fuck? So troll trolls happen. Come yeah, on, buddy. Troll trolls just kind of happen at the portal. It's kind of great. Dernan looks over while he's still and he's like still splattered in troll blood, but his face is like pristine. He's like, you should have seen the time whenever the purple worm came out of that place. It was great. Uh, We're not um, seeing here anymore. Uh, oh, 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 okay, uh, if, if you say so. Alright, so would you guys like to head to Castle Street and investigate the warehouse? Yes. So, you guys, uh, me and your wait. Go ahead. Part of me just wants to give up on, on this guy, because uh, from what I'm hearing about Bolo, uh, it doesn't seem like he's good for it. I mean... Again, I have to reiterate, this dude is one of the most famous um, writers in all of Forgotten Realms. This dude is, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, this dude is like essentially what passes for National Geographic in the realms. Okay. Um, so the fact that he doesn't have money at present is weird, but gotcha. he might want to pay you back with something else. And this is me well, talking, just, 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 go ahead. Real quick, I need to make sure that you're okay with this. If I do proceed with this, because I told you about my rules, and I told you that I don't, my rules don't change. We made a deal; the deal stays. Yeah, he um he has uh yeah. If I end up having to kill Volo or try to kill Volo, you're okay with this? I you know it's it's interesting um, what I I would have to like consider what like uh killing Volo would do, but uh. No, it, it, it's basically Forgotten Realm sacrilege, but I mean, hey, you know, what the players want to do is what the players want to do. I mean, better give me my money. <laughs> Bitch, better get my money. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. All right. There, he has very, very powerful friends. That's all I'm saying. That's fine. All right. So yeah, um, it's you a matter got of principle. Yeah, that's fair. You guys, um, you guys make it to um, Castle Street, and sure enough, it is like it's it is tumbleweeds and refuse, and a large uh, warehouse that you're looking at. Um, it's locked up from the front. Uh, there's some window. It's two stories, so there's like windows on each side. You guys could approach stealthily if you wanted, or you can kick down the door. You know. It seems like kicking down the door would not be very difficult because the whole place is kind of, oh, excuse me, kind of ramshackle and kind of busted up. Uh, 
How would you guys like to play this? I mean, Geralt's not just going to run in there. He's probably going to try to find a quieter way inside. All right. Would you like to approach the building stealthily? Sure. Yeah, roll me a stealth check. I really... I know what I want to do, but I, I know that I shouldn't. At uh, 23. Okay. Yeah, you're super easily able to... It's... Castle Lane is... Um, it's basically flanked by such tall buildings that the um that the only time light hits this place is during the midday sun but even then it's still like there's plenty of shadows to stick to as you approach the large yard and you uh that you, you get it through a hole in the fence that uh surrounds the warehouse um and you're able to sleek up to one of the walls and avoid the windows you can look in if you would like to or you can like make a scene or whatever Uh, I'll just look in the window and see if I see anything going on. So, you look in, and you see four halfling-sized figures, um, within, but they're not halflings. They look like they're birds, with, uh, crow-like beaks and stubby black God eyes. God damn it. And you hear one of them, The Xanathar sends its begar, uh, regards. Begard! And then another one says, "Put the lad in the put the lad in the closet. Put the lad in the closet." All right, I I'll tell you right now. I hate paintings <laughs> so much. <laughs> They're my favorite. Yeah. I hate them. I hate them. They're so annoying. <laughs> They're fun to play. You have to just watch the rest of the party get super frustrated that you can't actually communicate anything. No they time. are never not the worst part. No of time any to campaign. loot. <laughs> no time to loot the place. Just get him to the boss. Xanathar sends its regards. Well, look here. Uh, Geralt's just gonna look back at everybody and be like. Oh, this might be a dead end. Let's let's just go in. <laughs> you just want to kick the door down? Uh, uh, we're not even going to kick the door down. I'm just going to open the door and walk in. All right. So, um so you make a you you, you place your hand on the door and like try to uh to open it? Yes. Yeah. It is locked. All right, fine. I guess I kicked the door in. All right. Uh, have we tried knocking? You can make me a sh athletics check. I'll give That's you guidance, eight, my dude. <laughs> I'll give you guidance. Give you guidance. Roll a d4 on it. Yeah, you can do that. That makes it an eleven. All right, yeah. Um, y your your leg buckles against the door, but it easily is ripped from its hinges by rotting wood. And whenever you enter the building, um, you see a bunch of crates, but the room appears empty. There's a single black feather on top of um, uh, on the floor. Hmm. Uh, would we like to go in and look around? So, tables and chairs have been carelessly tossed around the floor. Uh, you see the corpses of about a dozen men lie along the walls, uh, their rapiers and their daggers lying nearby. Uh, on the north side of the area, stairs rise to an open level above. Well, okay. Um, I mean, I... I guess... Just double check or all the, the all the corpses extra corpsey. So the corpses appear to be pretty fresh. Um, they've only been dead for a couple hours at most. Um, but they're dead, dead like no spare the I don't even have spare the dying. I'm not that type of player. No, they but, are they uh, are no they are like slit throat like cold to the touch dead. Um, okay. Five of them uh, are clad in black leather armor. Um, 
pretty recognizable to you. Um, uh, blah, book. Um, and if you inspect them and brush back the back of their hair, you see a winged serpent uh, tattoo on the back of their neck. But this winged serpent is encased in a upside down purple triangle. Um, the remaining seven are um, humans, humans in like piecemeal leather armor. Again, vaguely familiar. These guys do not have tattoos. All right, scratch that. Uh, Sorry, the seven with the piecemeal armor, uh, each of them has a tattoo of a black circle with ten spokes radiating out on their right palms. Drop is just kind of like, well, this probably seems more in line with what we're looking, like, uh, looking for, but who's killing the people that we're hunting? Hmm. This is a conundrum. And you said there's stairs? Yes. I guess it doesn't hurt to continue our search. And he kind of motions upstairs and says, uh, hopefully it's a whole lot of the same, and but doesn't hurt. I ask this question with just the deepest regret. But Tyler, the fucking kinku still there? You don't see any kinku. Oh, thank God. Okay, we can get rid of that. Uh, yeah, let's... Is there, is there any direction other than upstairs? Uh, no, just the way you came in. Uh, you can, like, investigate and see if you can find anything else. Just the super high Audi. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I so, think I'm gonna uh, look around and see if there's like a secret basement or something. Rush is literally gonna get down on like his hands and knees and start like pushing rocks to try to like find buttons and traps and shit. <laughs> I rolled um, an investigation roll. Yeah. Is this okay? Yeah, that's fine. I rolled an 18. Uh, what does this find me? So, um, at the stairs, which is like the stairs are a uh, outlying set of stairs. You know what I'm talking about? Like they, they they jut out. It's not like a corridor with stairs. The stairs come out physically. Um, and beneath the stairs, there is a storage closet looking like a corridor. A Harry Potter closet or like under, under it, the stairs? L like a janitor's closet, but it is under the stairs. Okay, I'd like to go in and just kind of like softly wrap my knuckles on each wall. Okay. And really listen. Like... So you um, enter the storage closet and you see uh, the door to this room hangs loosely so it's pretty easy. You get in there and it smells like sour fish and vinegar. You see discarded ropes, uh, canvas tarpaulins, and uh, like splintered wood from smashed barrels. And you hear a sort of ragged breathing coming from uh, beneath a tarp. And before you can uh, go to investigate, you hear the fluttering of wings and a squawk as four kenku descend upon you from the ceiling. And that's where we'll end for tonight. Nope. Just to reiterate, I fucking hate kinku. <laughs> you just got kinku. Even at level one, I will just absolutely murder these kinku. You just got kinku, still, boy. I'm just, I'm just so enraged right now. <laughs> you know what's funny is that in our Dragon Heist run, we ended up adopting one of these kinku and naming him Duke. Don't he, give them ideas. He's a cook for us, and we love him, and he's wonderful. Duke is the best. All right. Um. So, do do I do the do I do the round the table compliments thing with you guys? Yeah, you have. I have before. Yeah, let's do that. Um, every one of you guys, give me uh, one thing that you like that another player did. Uh, Josh. I have really enjoyed just the purple thing. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, you're still purple. That's right. That's, that all happened whole... that day. Oh. You tried to convince Geralt that he was just... You were just purple, and that's how it was. And he just... Drunk to remember, and Geralt was like... I, why would you think I would believe that? Like, <laughs> what in your mind makes you think that this is okay? 
<laughs> oh man, um, Isaac. One thing you liked that another player um, did. I'm gonna have to go. Let's see. It was interesting having to deal around, like you know, book just like taking off with all of our money at all times, leaving us out to dry. Like, it, it, it's it's a cool way to like establish some dependency. I got it. I got to give you some credit, Mark. Damn it, book! Not again. <laughs> just say, just say, yeah. That's yeah. Excellent. That's exactly what it was. It wasn't the fact that book just you know made the deal and that was his money. <laughs> All right, and the and the fact that Rush is too awkward, like, uh, uh, my, but my, my money, uh, took uh, money. He... <laughs> you took my money. Bitch, better have my money. All right. Um, uh, I, I uh, yeah. Personally, like, um, I like Josh's ability to play drunk people. <laughs> yeah, I always like whenever Josh gets drunk in D and D. It's always really fun. It's really good. I, I really... always just act how I normally act when I'm drunk. <laughs> it worked out great. It's pretty wonderful. <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you guys very much for joining. Did everyone have fun? That was that was that good? Did it feel natural? Yes. Okay. I am still trying to figure out my character, but as far as like you running things, it's good. Excellent. This yeah, is uh. That was fun with you. I I am enjoying Geralt. He feels like he's going to be the dad of this group, which is just hysterical because I can... You can what? Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've just had to fall into that role with my... Oh yeah, with your other party. Um, yeah. I, I, I made you a gift and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up as like the last thing in the stream. If you just check in he, the... He's going to play music now. No, no, no. Check, check the. <laughs> I've been playing a uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer music this entire time, but um, no. Check, check the Discord uh, messages. <laughs> That'll be our title card for tomorrow. Um, I'll go ahead and update that now, just so I can get that out of the way. Excellent. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Um, well, yeah. Thank you guys very much. Uh, by the way, the the philosophy <laughs> behind that. Uh... Whoa, Josh is on. No, not our boy. Because he didn't want to see the special thing. <laughs> that secret, there he is. mysterious thing. I said the thing. special thing, and he showed back up. Hello. Yeah, I just I'm wanted back. to let you guys know that the philosophy behind that um, that exercise to say one thing you liked is because it uh, helps foster uh, a memory of what happened. Looking at Mark. Um, what? No, nah, I love you. Um, but like, it helps recontextualize everything that happened during the section as a memory. Um, it helps us, like, you know, remember things like, oh, man, do you remember that? Do you remember whenever that happened? Um, it's it's supposed to be like, you know, hey, this is a fun thing that was really cool that I enjoyed. And that helps you solidify it in your brain by talking about it, by recalling it. Um, and also, it's just, it's fun. It's fun to be complimented on something you did. Um, I'm super excited about this. I had a great time doing this. And uh, I was woefully underprepared, but Waterdeep is a city near and dear to my heart. So it was nice and easy to work with so yeah i hope you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your time in the water deep did we say so, how long i'm i'm purple um, i know it's the day for the stealth stuff but how long am i like purple uh for a day oh okay um and also you guys are level two Mm. Ooh, cuckoo. Yeah. Cuckoo. So, now I can actually do something. Welcome to level two. Oh, these kinks are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, if yeah, go ahead. Get riggedy, Brett. Uh, you guys have anything else you need before we scoot out? I am uh, I literally I already loading up Minecraft. So <laughs> All right. Just, cool. Yeah, just you know, make it to Minecraft. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll hop on just a bit. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, future us or whoever. I had a couple people check it out. I don't think they stayed for too long, but thank you if you did. Um, all right. Yep. That's today. That's session one for Waterdeep Dragon Heist. I look forward to next week.